Man United have finally sacked Eric Ten Hag. He joins a long list of managers that haven't been able to get the job done at United since Sir Alex Ferguson. As right now the Red Devils sit 14th in the Premier League and for them that is beyond terrible. Now legendary striker Ruud van Nistelrooy is in charge on an interim basis, but I think they hired the wrong guy. So today I'm taking charge of Man United for the next 10 seasons. The goal is to win as many trophies as possible, bring them back to the glory days and more importantly make them Europe's most dominant team again. But the takeover wheel is back to make my life at United either way easier or a full on nightmare. So here we go guys, season 1 of 10 with United and this is the starting team that we've loaded into and in my opinion EA have been very kind considering just how bad this United team is in real life. I mean granted there are some very talented individuals in this United squad but as a team guys they are absolutely atrocious. I mean when Johnny Evans is one of your best centre backs at 36 years old as well guys you know you're in a bit of trouble. But the future does somewhat look promising for United as they've got Lenny Yoro, an 18 year old centre back who's got bags of potential. There's also Alejandro Garnaccio who's already shown what he can do, he just needs to get a bit of consistency. And there's of course Kobe Mainu as well. And as far as our budget goes we're stat leaders and gents 125 mil to spend in season one but we're gonna have to spend it wisely as the leaderboard is back with united of course being the first team to try and rack up as many trophies as humanly possible the question is though over the next decade how many trophies are we actually gonna win with this united team well guys i guess we're about to find out but first things first we gotta mess around with these tactics so we're using the 4-2-3-1 with the short passing build-up style and a very high defensive line as for our player instructions our striker it will be advanced with our can being a playmaker our wingers inside forwards our wing backs are actually going to be wing backs with our cdms being deep line playmakers i know this is a very attacking formation but i reckon united will get away with this and for now guys this is in my opinion our best team by a country mile that we can feel going into season one and i know that some decisions i've made will leave you scratching your head for example diogo Dalla being our right back i know after that shock or miss you united fans hate this guy but he's literally the best right back we've got but that's that's where this budget comes in ladies and gents and if that takeover we'll remember is on our side we'll actually be able to spend it and massively improve this united squad so let's not waste any more time and see what's in store in season one okay second stint only signed former man united players okay i can get behind that i mean i think we can all agree bringing back a couple of former united players may definitely improve this united team a little bit as one player i am bringing back to united is angel gomez from lille i mean he's 23 78 rated his contract's running out and if you paid attention to the england squad you know just how good this guy is and on top of that he'll be the perfect replacement for bruno fernandez when the time comes and after only spending 15 million on him that's an absolute bargain now this will be a head scratcher but i want to sign chris smalling i mean granted he's 34 years old but he's 82 overall and as i've already said united's depth when it comes to center backs isn't amazing so i feel like smalling will definitely help strengthen our defense and there we go nine million pounds later Chris Smalling returns to Old Trafford. Now I don't know whether this will be controversial or not but I want to bring David De Gea back to United. I mean his contract's running out so it'll be much cheaper than usual. He's still 84 overall and for his age he's got really good stats and he'll be a great second choice for Andre Onana. And there we go that's another nine and a half million spent this time on David De Gea. And we've still got 78 million to spend but there's only one more player I want to bring back and I think we all know who it is. He was very unfairly forced out of the club when he was one of their best players. He carried United at times. He was scrutinised and he was made the scapegoat as well. Of course, I'm talking about Romelu Lukaku. 31, 82 rated. And if you think for a second I'm being serious when I'm saying this, you must be off your rocket. I'm obviously talking about CR7, one of the greatest players of all time. Still got it at almost 40 years old and I can't wait to welcome him back to United. And that is exactly what I've done for a measly 18 million to wrap up our transfer win. But it's not quite finished just yet because I am putting all five of these players on loan. I mean, players like Casemiro, I'm doing it just to make way for Kobe Mainu, but all the players like Zuxi, Ahmad, Yoro, and Arya Mas, they've got bags of potential. They just won't get game time here. But to be fair, we do have a slight issue that I didn't think about. We've now got Ronaldo in the team, but we've now got three strikers. We've got to play a two-striker formation. Otherwise, this signing was just a waste of time. Now, I'm thinking the 4 one 2 one 2 Why We've got our two strikers, our Cam, our CDM, and the two wingers still in the team. We will have them playing a little differently though because our fullbacks now won't be as attacky 
attacking and our CDM won't be as attacking either. He'll be sitting just in front of our centre backs. And now that that's taken care of guys, this is now in my opinion our strongest team by a mile. To be honest, I actually kind of like the looks of this formation. The 4-1-2-1-2 wide is actually pretty overpowered. And when you add in Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the best goal scorers of all time, who knows what we can actually achieve this year in our first season in charge of United. Well, I'm not sure what we've achieved just yet, but look at Ronaldo, man. 48 goal contributions in 63 games. For a 40-year-old, that is absolutely amazing. Bruno had a good season too of 44 goal contributions. Hoyland with 21 himself. Those are decent too. And as you can see on paper, there's been a lot of improvements. Everybody's happy too, so maybe we've actually won a bit of silverware this year. Unfortunately, it's not Premier League silverware as we are sixth in the league. To be fair though, we did finish four points above Arsenal, so that is something. But to be fair, we were never expecting to win the Premier League in season one, were we? This is going to be a process. But we've won the FA Community Shield, beating Man City on penalties. Oh, that is amazing. Trophy number one in season one. And we could have had a double, but Newcastle beat us in the FA Cup final. And City annihilated us in the Carabao Cup final. Oh my God, we could have had three trophies this year if we weren't bottle jobs. Are we the new Tottenham Hotspur? As for the Europa League, we only won two games out of eight and we just scraped the playoffs. But guys, we were nowhere near winning the Europa League as Fenerbahce knocked us out in round of 16. I have to admit that I am disappointed by because this team should definitely be pulling up a better fight against Fenerbahce. But this is just the beginning. Remember, we've got nine years left to win this Manchester United team as many trophies as we possibly can. But before we get to season two, if you're enjoying this takeover so far with Manchester United, drop this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you are new around here. Okay, it's now time for season two with United. What's this going to be? Oh, season ending. Your second best player is injured for the entirety of this season. Oh, come on, man. And it looks like the Ligt is going to be out for this year, man, because according to our squad up, he's our second best player. I know that Ronaldo is the same rating as the Ligt, but I'm assuming the Ligt's higher than him because he's literally 50 years younger. But the bad news keeps rolling guys, we've only got 78 million to spend. And I was initially going to replace the lip for the year, but then I realised we don't really have to. Because we've got Lenny Yoro who's currently out on loan at the minute. Now I know his overall isn't amazing, but he's got so much potential. It kind of just makes sense to give him a go whilst one of our best centre-backs is out for the season. But now that that's sorted, we've got something else to deal with. We've got Jadon Sancho back at United from his loan move from Chelsea. And to be honest, he's a much better player now. But I don't see a world where he plays for United again. Plus he's worth 50 million, so I reckon we just cash in on him. So that's exactly what I've done. He's gone to Juve for 53 million, which now gives us 129 million to spend. But the question is now, where do we actually put that money? I'm thinking a new left back. Luke Shaw's 30 years old now. He's 83 overall. He's not got many years left in him. And with this being 10 seasons, we need to think of the future, which is why I'm signing Alfonso Davies. Only mid twenties and 85 overall. He's a proper well-rounded fullback too. Plus I've read somewhere that he's not extending his contract at Bayern. So he is looking to move somewhere and where better than United. And there we go, 70 million later, we got the deal done. We do still have 49 million to spend, but honestly, we don't really need it. I mean, the team right now is fantastic. It's the perfect mixture of quality, experience, and youth talent. And given the fact we signed Alfonso Davies, our defense is gonna be so much stronger. Honestly, I reckon he's gonna be the difference maker in season two. Unfortunately, it wasn't much of one in the Premier League as we only managed to jump up one place, fifth in the league. To be fair though, right now, I reckon United fans would take this. But we get embarrassed in the FA Cup. Spurs knocked us out in round three. And Rotherham knock us out in the Carabao Cup. That's beyond awful. But this time we do much better in the Europa League. Eighth in the league phase. We go straight to the round of 16. And we made the final, but Leon beat us 3-2. For God's sake, that could have been our ticket to the Champions League. I mean, at this point, I feel like the team is more than good enough to be in that competition at this point. It has to be said though, guys, while Lenny Euro has gone up to 82 rated. I do feel like we've massively missed the lit this year, man. Look at his overall now, 84 overall. But whilst defensively we've got issues, up top we've got none whatsoever. Look at Ronaldo, 41 goal contributions at 41 years old. This guy just isn't human, is he? And the good news is, guys, the lit will be back in the team next year. So hopefully if that takeover wheel is on our side, we'll just be able to add even more quality to this team. Okay, guys, we're now into season three with United. And I've just realized we're going to 
have to keep an eye on a couple of these players because as you can see, some of them are beginning to get on a bit. Bruno Fernandes being one of them. I know he's 91 overall, but he's still 31 years old. I do think because of how good he is, we'll be able to keep him for longer, but age catches up to everybody. Ronaldo being one of them is he's officially retiring at the end of this year. So going into season four, we will have to start thinking about a replacement for one of the greatest footballers of all time. Well, the good news is for this year, we've got 162 million to spend. And unlike last year, I know exactly where I'll put that money, but that's only if the takeover wheel will let me. So let's see if it will, ladies and gents, as we're spinning the wheel for the third time in this video. Court cheating. Oh, sod off with your transfer bands wheel. Give me a break. I mean, this money right now may as well be absolutely nothing because we can't do a damn thing with it. It's a good job our team is as good as it is right now because otherwise we'd be in trouble heading into this campaign. But funnily enough, we've had our best finish in the Premier League so far. We are third in the league, man. Not only that, we are finally back in the Champions League. Who would have thought it also too was a transfer ban to make this happen? Still no FA Cup though as Wayne Rooney's Plymouth Argyle knock us out on pens. And we bottle another Carabao Cup final. Oh my god, we actually are the new Tottenham Hotspur. But we once again make it to the knockouts after finishing 7th in the Europa League league phase. And this time we've won it, we've beaten Borussia Mönchengladbach 2-1. Finally another trophy in our cabinet. And truth be told, it's about time we won the Europa League with this United squad. I mean, I don't know how we didn't win it before. But looking at our stats, it makes sense why we've done it this year. Hoyland, Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes gain at least 30 goal contributions. That's insane. And with Ronaldo retiring at the end of this season, it's going to leave a massive hole up top. Frankly, a hole that we're going to have real trouble filling. But the good news is because we finished third in the Prem and won the Europa League, we finally got United back in the Champions League. And if that wheel is on our side again in Season 4, we are finally going to be stepping in the right direction to once again making United the world's best team. So let's see if it's on our side, guys. Season 4, and we are going to get free pass. I think we can do what we want. Yes, we can. Beautiful. And we've almost got a quarter of a billion to spend to begin with, guys. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have some fun in this window. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go through the team, see who I don't want or see who I don't think should be in the team and get rid of them straight away. But I as it turns out, there's only two players I want to sell anyway, Mason Mount being one and Xerxes being the other. To be fair, Xerxes shouldn't even be here, man. He's leaving in January to go back to Italy. I should have got rid of him in season one. And there we go, guys. As you can see, we've got rid of pretty much everybody on the transfer list, which leaves us 320 million to spend. Yeah, this transfer window is going to be huge. I mean, if we get this right, guys, we could be looking at the Champions League winners in season four. But we still got to be smart with our money, which is why I'm sad rest desk from Leverkusen, 85 overall at 22 years old. Remember guys, there's still a while to go till the end of this takeover and we need to keep a light rest desk who can not only last till the end but continue to improve until the end too. And there we go, I have just signed rest desk on a five year deal for 65 million. And there we go, we've got a keeper now in the team, we just need a striker up top to partner up with Hoyland. But I'm going big and bold with this one guys, I'm going for Endrick, 84 overall at only 21 years old, but to be fair, same going bold. He plays for Ipswich Town. That would never happen. But you never know. He might join United in the future. So I've made it happen today by spending $96.7 on him on a five-year deal. Leaving us $145 million to spend. And I do have an idea of where we could put that money. And no, it's not replacing Bruno Fernandes. I want to keep him for another two or three years because I feel like he's just going to stay at about 90 overall. Instead, I'm replacing Rashford. He's almost there to himself. He's a significantly worse player than Bruno. And to be fair, stats-wise, he's not not really contributing anything much to the team. So I'm going for Nico Williams, mid-20s, such a better player than Rashford, but he will cost between 140 and 112 million, so there's a chance we may have to throw a player into this deal too. So I'm putting Marcus Rashford in this deal alongside 89 million. I'm pretty sure they should go for this. But let's see if they will. Oh, oh. Okay, they don't want Rashford, they want straight cash. That I didn't see coming. Okay, we're bidding 130 just to make sure we've got money for his contract. And it looks like they're happy with it, fair enough. And there we go, our transfer window is done after signing Nico Williams on a five-year deal. And I am loving the looks of this team at the minute, guys. I'm telling you right now, we're looking at a multiple-time Champions League winning side here. And to be fair, we might win it in Season 4, guys, especially with the quality we got on the team now. I don't see why not, to be honest. But never mind the Champions League for a second. We are Premier League champions with United in only four years of being in charge. And to be honest, guys, all I can say is it's about damn time. We've 
also finally won the FA Cup, so that's the double. And we've won the Carabao Cup. Ladies and gents, we've got the treble in Season 3. But the quadruple is out of our reach as Real Madrid knock us out in the round of 16 of the UCL. But you know what? This team got us the treble, so we really cannot be complaining too much, can we? As for the stats, guys, they're not as good as last year, but they're certainly pretty impressive, especially Endrick gained 27 goals and 6 assists for his first season in the Prem. This is what happens when the wheel is actually on our side for once, ladies and gents. I'm telling you, if the wheel's on our side again in Season 5, expect that Champions League to be coming home to Old Trafford. But we do indeed need it to be on our side, guys, in order for something decent to... Oh, okay. Maximum potential. Choose three players and make their overalls their max potential. That's actually really good. So we can take any three players in this entire team and whatever their supposed potential is, we can make their ratings just that. And I've officially made my mind up on the three players. Harry and Mass is going to be one of them because this potential is supposed to be 85 rated. Ethan Wheatley's another because he's supposed to have 83 potential and we could do with a better second choice striker. And I'm maxing Ahmed Diallo out as well because his overall potential is supposed to be 85 too. Now I would go for Kobe Manu but his potential is only two ratings higher than his current rating and plus with him being in the start 11 he'll no doubt grow to that rating by the end of this season anyway. And we've sorted it as you can see guys and to be fair because we've done that our bench is absolutely stacked now. But we do have 180 million to spend because that wheel didn't say anything about a transfer ban and I think it's about time we pulled the trigger on doing something. It's time to replace Bruno. As you can see, his stats are starting to go down. He might be one of the world's best cams at the minute, but next year he probably won't be. And guys, I have found the perfect replacement. Xavi Samus from PSG. 89 overall at 25 years old. I mean, I can't think of anybody better for the price we're going to pay for him. As we've just spent 120 million to sign him on a five-year deal to wrap up this window. As this is the squad going into season number five. And honestly, guys, as we're halfway through this, this takeover i think we've done such a good job i mean i'm feeling confident this year man especially with a bench as stacked as this i feel like we can win absolutely every competition we're a part of this year but apparently we can't guys is man city win the premier league this time in quite convincing fashion and we lose the community shield to arsenal on penalties that really isn't a good start no fa cup either as the ball jobs knocked us out and no carabao cup chelsea knock us out in the quarters oh my god we're zero and four at the minute Maybe that zero in five as Athletic Bilbao have annihilated us in the Champions League. Oh my god, I fully thought we'd have smashed season five, but apparently not. But looking at this team, it's got to be one of the strongest in the world. So my question is, where the hell are we going wrong? I mean, the stats, as usual, are pretty impressive. There's nothing wrong with us going forward. It looks like it's our defence that's the issue. But after five seasons, guys, as you can see, we've only won five trophies with United. So it looks like this team needs to buck its ideas up, man, because by the end of this team, Takeover, I want at least 15 trophies. So here we go, season number six. What are we going to get? Oh, this isn't good. Aging, your best player just turned 38 years old. Happy birthday, freaking fantastic. So that means Alfonso Davies is now 38 years old, which means one of two things, either he's gonna retire next year or he's gonna really go down in rating. Thankfully, we've got 229 million to spend and no transfer ban. That wheel's really being kind with that, isn't it? But I'm not knocking it because because we've been able to sort our left back problem out as we've spent 105 million on Alejandro Balde. He's only 25 and 89 rated. He's basically the exact same player that Alfonso Davies was when we bought him. But we still have 160 million to spend and there's two things that I do want to do with this money. Firstly, I want a second choice keeper better than Andre Onana. I mean, he's 33 years old. At some point, that overall will start to dwindle and I want to be prepared for it. And we need another CDM because as you can see, we've literally only got two of them. So I'm going to sign Nico Gonzalez and also Matej Kovar. Both solid players, both young enough to last until the end of this takeover, and more importantly, we can afford both of them. And there we go for the grand total of 75 million combined. We signed both of these players on five-year deals. And I think we can leave the transfer window there, guys. We've got Alejandro Balde to replace Alfonso Davies, and we've got Nico Gonzalez and Matej Kovar as our backups now. This United team is in a very, very good place, and it's just a matter of time before we become the best team in the world. And it's not a bad start as we are 
once again the best team in England by a whopping nine points as well. Still no FA Cup though as Newcastle knock us out in round six. And City knock us out at the Carabao Cup. So right now we're one and three. But that could be two and four as we are third in the league phase and we go straight to the knockouts. And we made it to the semis but Barca knocked us out. Come on man, what do we have to do to win the UCL? I mean at this point, what more can we do to this team to make it any better? These world class talent on and off the pitch. I mean we certainly don't need any strikers. Look at Hoyland and Hendrik man, they're killing it up top. I guess we're just going to have to wait till next season, see what the takeover wheel gives us, and then just go from there. So let's spin the wheel for season seven to see what's actually in store for us. Oh, come on. Overpaying isn't good. Release clause signings only. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, that isn't actually that bad. But I ain't got a set. We've only got 66 million to spend. How do we win the Premier League and make the semis of the Champions League and only get 66 million? United, you cheapskates. To be fair, guys, if there's nobody decent on this release clause list, I'm not going to bother because it's just a waste of money when our team's stacked as it is. Now, these are the players that I found, guys. To be honest, there are a couple of good ones like Clifford Ali and also Estevo Alves, but they aren't worth the money we'd spend on them, especially when we've got better players on our bench anyway. I say we cut our losses this year and go to the end of the season and save this money for next year. And so far, I think I've made the right choices. We are once again Premier League champions. Isn't it ironic that when we don't spend money on the team, we actually do better? Saying that though, we lost to Forest in the Community Shield final. That should be two trophies out of two right there. Still no FA Cup though, as City knocked us out this time. But we've beaten them to win the Carabao Cup. You know what? I'll take that. And we could be on for another treble still, as we are once again through straight away to the knockout. And we've actually done it. We've beaten Juve 2 1. We are finally the best team in the world. And looking at this team, I've said it once before, I'll say it again. It's about damn time. And it's not just Hendrik and Hoyland this time. Everybody got on the score sheet, man, gained at least 20 goal contributions. The question is now. Now, though, with only three years left of this takeover, how many trophies are we going to be able to win in that amount of time? Well, we're about to find out, guys. Let's see what the wheel's going to store for us. Okay, bankrupt. No funds. Transfer ban this year, and you must raise 100 million to pay your debt off. Come on, man. Really? I mean, they weren't joking. We've got nothing in our budget, so now we've got to raise 100 million before we can move on with the season. But the good news is, guys, we have got plenty of quality in this team with quality quite a bit of money so hopefully after two or three transfers this should be taken care of and there we go after what felt like a freaking eternity we finally got over a hundred million that's that done we're going to the end of season eight and forgetting this ever happened and just look at this, man. United are once again Premier League champions, this time by five points. I think as well as that, that's three Premier League titles in a row. But we lose another Community Shield 11-10 on penalties to Bora. Oh, my God. Still no FA Cup, though, as MK Dons of all teams knocked us out. And Brighton knock us out at the Carabao Cup. I honestly give up with these competitions. But we have won the Super Cup, beating Dortmund to do it. So we can beat Dortmund to win the Super Cup, but not Bora to win the Community Shield. Shield. But man, did they get their revenge on us. They battered us in the quarters of the Champions League 4-0 on aggregate. I mean, I'm going out on a limb here and saying with how good our team is, that just should not be happening. But man, these stats are good. Look at Hoyland and Endrick again. They're killing it up top together. But what amazes me, look at the age of our highest rated players, man. We have done a phenomenal job of building this team over the course of the last eight years. And considering the last two things on the takeover wheel are really good, I'm feeling very very confident that we're going to have a very strong finish to this takeover. So as we enter the final stretch, what are we going to land on first? Okay, plus three. What is this? Your bench players get a plus three in their rating, but you have a transfer. Do you know what? I'll actually take that. I mean, just look at this bench now. For goodness sake, it's full of talent. To be fair, actually, we could replace some of these bench players with the starting 11 players. And that's exactly what I've done. Yoros in the starting 11, Gonzalez is, and Ahmed Diallo for the first time in this takeover is now a starting 11 player too. I'm hoping with these changes this can help us win the Champions League again man. It doesn't sit right with me that we've only won that competition once. But one thing we've definitely won more than once is the Premier League as for the fourth time in a row we've won it. Man normally the Premier League's a nightmare to win but we're making it look easy. And we finally won the 
Community Shield, it's about freaking time. But we lose to Burnley in the FA Cup final. I cannot believe after nine years we still haven't won this competition. And there's no Carabao Cup this year either. But we've won the Champions League once again, smashing AC Milan in the final, once again being the best team in the world. And looking at the state of these stats, up and down the pitch, it's phenomenal. But look at Endrick, 57 goal contributions in 63 games. This guy's a generational talent. And as we end season now with United, we have won 14 trophies in total, which to be fair, isn't bad. But that leaves this United team one more year to win as many trophies as humanly possible to give them the best chance of topping this leaderboard by the end of the series. So here we go, 10th and final year of this takeover. Game changes is the last thing on the wheel. What is it? Make a player of your choice, 99 rated, but make no signings. I mean, to be fair, we're getting a 99 rated player. I can't be mad about the signings part. The question is now though, who on earth do I make 99 overall out of this United team? I mean, we could go for Restes. I mean, he's only five overall from that actually happening. We could make Lenny Yoro a 99 rated centre back. I mean, how goated would that be? But I know who I'm going to make a 99 rated player. Rasmus Hoyland. He's been an absolute superstar from season one up until this point. And honestly, I think out of everybody, he deserves it the most. And there we go. Rasmus Hoyland is 99 overall. I think it's going to be interesting to see who's the top goal scorer at the end of this year because Endrick is no slouch himself. And because we've got a transfer ban, there's nothing more. I can do to improve this team so this is how it looks going into the 10th and final year of this takeover and to be honest i'm expecting at least the treble this year man especially with a 99 rated striker we should win bloody everything with him up top now and we're off to a good start we are once again the premier league champion by 15 points man what a way to end the takeover in the prem but we lose to burnley again this time losing the community shield fight how do we lose to burnley seriously and it's official we've gone the full takeover without winning the fa cup that is actually nuts. We also got knocked out in the quarters of the Carabao Cup. And we lost the Super Cup to Roma. Oh my goodness. We are literally 1-4 right now. But at least we won the Champions League, beating Leverkusen of all teams to do it. If you know, you bloody know. As for the stats, they're genuinely the best we've actually had in this takeover. Look at Endrick, by the way, outscoring Rasmus Hoyland. And this is the team that we end this takeover with. Not exactly what I thought it would be, but that wheel literally takes you on a journey of its own. But we do end this takeover with United, winning 16 trophies in total, with Hoyland being our top goal scorer and Xavi Simons actually being our top assist. And that means that 16 is the number of trophies to beat on this leaderboard, guys. But the question is, will next Friday's team be able to do that? You're going to have to wait to find out, guys. Until then, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to leave it a like and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you want to watch more content from me, YouTube recommends you watch this. Luton Town unfortunately found themselves back in the championship after getting relegated last season. But compared to both the Blades and Burnley who are looking to bounce back into the Premier League, their season so far isn't going too well. In fact, they are currently sitting near the bottom of the table in a relegation scrap already. But today, guys, we're going to fix that. As I have become Luton Town's manager to make them the best team in the world. But it's not going to be that simple. No transfers, no youth academy, no scouting system. I am only allowed to sign free agents. So here is the team we have loaded into with Luton Town with one of the wackiest formations I have ever seen. But to be fair, it's a decent squad. I mean, they've got Tender Mengi, Elijah Adibayo, Kaminsky, Alfie Doughty. Luton Town should be nowhere near the bottom three. Obviously, I'm not saying they're perfect. They do have things to improve upon. For example, it is a very aging team at the minute. I mean, just under 10 players are above 30 years old. But the good news is, looking at the highest rated players, they've got majority of them are in their mid-20s. So that is definitely a positive thing. And on top of that, there's only one player currently on loan to them, which is a massive dub. And on top of that, we've got 13 million to spend this transfer window. But as you guys know, we're only allowed to sign free agents with this money. And with that comes two rules to follow. The first one being we're allowed a maximum of three signings per season. And we can't sign anyone better than our best player. And in our case, that's Alfie Doughty, 77 overall. So anybody higher rated than that on the free agents list is out of bounds for the time being. 
The good news is though, we've got a pretty solid team on our hands, especially for one in the championship. But the question is now, guys, how long is it going to take us to get Luton Town from the championship to being the best team in the world? But before we think about any of that, first things first, guys, we've got to mess with our tactics. And this may shock you guys, I'm rocking the 5-2-3 with a counter-attacking style build-up play with a very deep line. I feel like this is going to absolutely torment the championship. We're going to have our front three advancing up the field. Chong's going to be our playmaker clock being box to box with our wing bats gaining on the action and obviously our back three being rock solid there. I do think at some point we'll have to meddle around with these tactics again however for now I reckon for the championship this is solid. And here is in my opinion our strongest starting 11 going into season one. Obviously there's a couple of players playing out of position. Chong will need to be converted to a centre mid and we'll need a couple of wingers. I mean I love Victor Moses but the guy's 33 years old. It won't take him long this year before he starts going down in overall. But that's where this 30 million comes in and our three free agent signings, ladies and gents. Because I'm using two of them on left and right wingers and I might go for a better defender just to make sure our defence is a little stronger heading into our first year in charge. But if we call sort the defence out, I'm not really fussed. As long as we can get wingers to replace Morris and Moses, I'll be a happy guy going into season one. But we've got our centre-back straight away in Jesus Orozco Chiquette. Only 22, 72 overall, standing at Six foot two as well. He's got decent pace, defending, and physicality. And for that reason alone, guys, he's our first signing as Luton Town's new manager. And there we go, our back line, just like that, already looks a little bit better with a Roscoe Chiquette in it. Now we just need two wingers. And I've found a baller, ladies and gents. Diego Lanes, only 24, 76 rated already. And we're not breaking any rules because he's actually one rating lower than Alfie Doughty. He's got decent pace and dribbling. His shooting and passing is isn't that good but give me enough time with him we can certainly turn that around and there he is in the starting 11 now we just need a left wing and that's our transfer window done and guys our last signing is going to be the free agent goat himself alexis vega mid 20 77 overall got insanely well balanced stats as well i don't know how i could say no to him and there we go ladies and gents season one's transfer is wrapped up after signing alexis vega on a five-year deal but we will be loaning quite a few players out the these lot in particular just to make sure that they don't get in the way of the players in the starting team that I actually want to get game time. As this is the team going into season one guys and honestly I would say we're one of the strongest teams in the championship at this point. Especially with a front three of Alexis Vega, Elijah Adibayo and Diego Lanes. That's actually pretty decent for the Premier League never mind the championship. That's not me saying it's going to be easy. Burnley are still in this league so are Leeds United, Norwich City and Sheffield United of course this isn't going to be a walk in the park but we should definitely do better than how they are in real life if they don't with the signs that we've made i'm resigning after season one but i think the free agent go to loan is keeping me at luton for another season man 32 goals and six assists in 49 games i call him the free agent goat for a reason and that's it he's literally put everybody else to shame man diego lane's got four goals in 49 games i don't care how good he is i'm looking for a better right winger if he does that again next year but on paper, man, look at the state of this team. I mean, a lot of these players are actually ready for the Premier League. But Luton itself isn't ready for the Premier League. We just missed out on the playoffs by one stinking point, man. That is gutting. I mean, I bet Luton fans will defo take this over where they're at in real life. But for me, this is disappointing. We also got knocked out straight away by Arsenal in the FA Cup. And Ipswich knocked us out in round two of the Carabao Cup. I'm still salty about this, by the way. We scored 71 goals for goodness sake. That's the third highest in the entire championship. Maybe it's this formation, ladies and gents, because whilst we did score quite a few goals for the defensive formation, imagine what we could do when we're a bit more attacking. Maybe a variation of the 4-3-3 is the way to go. Maybe even the 4-2-3-1. I'm really not too certain, to be honest. I feel like we figured that out at the start of season two and then go from there. And guys, whilst I've got your attention, if you're enjoying this free agent rebuild with Luton Town, drop this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. Now guys, we've just arrived into season two and I've made me mind up on what formation I'm going to rock with. I want the 4-3-3 attacking variation, providing we can find a decent cam in the free agents list. I've also tweaked the tactics just a little bit to suit this new formation. We've gone short passing instead of countering build-up style and we've got a bit of a higher defensive line. I 1000% think this is actually going to pay off, man, but in order for it to actually work, we need to improve this team a bit. 
guys. For example, we need a better cam than Jordan Clark, 31, 71 overall. He's not really going to improve, and we're not going to have him for that long either. We obviously could convert Chong to being a cam again, but I kind of want to keep him in the center of the park. He did really well there last season. We need a better center mid than Mpanzu, and ideally a better keeper than Kaminsky as well. I mean, if we are to get promotion this year, I want a decent keeper going into the Premier League. I do not want to have to worry about that next year. And whilst we're only allowed to sign three players still this season, we can sign players 80 rated now if we want to, because Alfie Doughty and Diego Lanes are both 80 overall now. So right now, it's just a case of trusting and hoping that this free agent says comes in clutch for us. And it actually has, you know, Mattia Perrin is a free agent. He's 32, 79 overall. And if we do get promoted for season three, I defo trust him in the Prem. And for that reason, I'm signing him. I've also found Josh De Silva, mid 20, 74 rating. I don't think he's going to grow into anything amazing, but for right now, he's absolutely brilliant, which is why I'm also signing him. And looking at the team now, if I do say so myself, I think I've done pretty well so far in this transfer window, but we still need a central attacking midfielder. And unfortunately, after getting two dubs in a row, we've got to settle for an owl now, guys. We've got Christopher Horvath, who's the best attacking midfielder in that free agents list. I mean, he does have 76 pace and 71 dribbling, but that shooting and passing is actually awful. But right now, we've got no other choice, which is why I've just signed Christopher Horvath on a five-year deal. But to be fair, guys, this team could look way, way worse. I definitely feel like we're still a contender for promotion in season two. And one thing I've just this second noticed, look at the average age of our highest rated players, man. There's so much more room for improvement. This is just getting better and better. And hopefully this means we'll get loose in town either the playoffs or promotion this year. Because let's be honest, if this team doesn't even sniff the playoffs this season, it will be a complete and utter failure. But guys, I don't think it's a failure. Look at these stats, man. It's not just Vega this time banging goals in for fun. It's literally everybody. And just look at how good this team is now, man. I don't care. We've surely got to at least have made the playoffs. But we've done one better. We're promoted to the Premier League as champions. We've Smash the championship. We got 105 points as well, man. Oh my God, I know that isn't a record, but surely that's close. 96 goals scored, 35 conceded. The tactics were ladies and gents. Just call me a genius now. We even made it to round five of the FA Cup this time before Liverpool knocked us out on pens. And this time we made it to round three of the Carabao Cup too. Man, I'm so happy with how this team's performed this year. Obviously, there's so much more work to do. I'm not blind to that, but this is a damn good start. And like I've already said, the average age of our highest rated players is mid 20s. We've done a seriously good job bringing youth quality into this team. But now that we're promoted and we're going to be playing against the big boys of England next season, we do need to work on certain areas of this team. Maybe a better right back than Hashioka, maybe a better cam than Horvath, maybe look for a better keeper than Perrin in the long term as well. To be fair, I do think with the team as it is now, we'll still survive the Premier League, but I do not want to take any chances. The Premier League and FC 25 is freaking ruthless. And as we enter season three with Luton Town, it's official. We have got them back into the Prem. But now it's my job to make sure this team stays in the Premier League. I mean, I feel like they would anyway, but it's the Premier League. You can never be too sure as a newly promoted team. Now, as I've already said, I want a better right back than Daiki Hashioka. I mean, he's 27, 75 rated. I don't see him improving all that much more. I also want a better cam than Christopher Horvath. I mean, that might sound harsh, but he's 74 overall in the Premier League. He ain't going to improve. He's just going to get annihilated. But if we can't find any decent cams in that free agency, we'll just convert Chong back to a cam himself because he's 79 overall at 26 years old with a lot more in the tank left to give by the looks of it. Which means in that case, we'll have to find a centre midfielder and we're also going to try and find a long-term replacement for Perrin because he's 33 years old now. He's not going to last like this for much longer. But straight away, I've solved our midfield problem. Mohamed Daoud is 30 years old, 70 six overall he's also got premier league experience as well which is exactly what we need and exactly why we're signing him i've also found italian fullback samuel berendali i mean he's in his mid-20s 77 overall pretty fast too i'm not saying this guy's a world beater but i'm saying he's better than our current right back and for that reason he's signing number two of season number three and so far guys i'm happy with our two signings but we've got one more signing to make and we are gunning for a long-term goalkeeper to replace parent eventually. 
And guys, I might have just found one. Roberto Giordano looks decent. 1977 rated already. I mean, he definitely wasn't ready for the starting team yet, but we can certainly send him out on loan. And with the signing of Roberto Giordano, that's our transfer window for season three done. But because we've signed Daoud as our centre mid, we are converting Tyus Chung to a cam. Let's see what happens. 81 overall. Oh, that's just exactly what we needed. And with that, just look at the team. Now, I'm not saying it's a Amazing. I'm not saying it's world class, but what I am saying is for a newly promoted side, we're definitely going to do better than average. But I will be keeping my eye on certain players like Orozco, Chiquete, like Mendy, like Chong, and like Adibayo, because those are four players I am expecting at any point to stop growing, and right now they just aren't. But that's just one last thing to worry about if they don't stop growing. But right now, I'm just hoping that Dahoud, Brendan Ali, and also Giordano make a difference this year, because if they do, Luton Town could be looking pretty good at the the end of season three and guys we are looking good at the end of season three we are literally top 10 as a newly promoted side that's insane we are only 10 points outside of european football as well i'm not personally thinking about that just yet but if the team's doing this well already maybe it's time i started considering european football but we've been humbled in the fa cup guys bristol city battered us in round three and barrow knocked us out in round two of the carabao cup well that's just fantastic isn't it but what is fantastic is our team man oh my goodness there's only like three players under 80 overall in the entire squad and on top of that Orozco Chiquete Mengi and Chong are doing well it just looks like Adi Bayo is the player I've got to keep my eye on now but he's actually our top goal scorer with 16 and 1 and 38 fair play to him that's a great first season back in the prem Alexis Vega got 15 and 3 Diego Lenz got 12 and 4 it's safe to say our front three know how to score goals but that's not the only bit of good news Roberto Giordano has gone up to 80 overall in his first season out on low. When he comes back in season number five, ladies and gents, he's going to be a straight starting 11 player. But guys, to get Luton Town European football, I think we need a better centre midfielder partnership than De Silva and Daoud. I mean, they are by a mile the weakest links in our team now. I will also be looking for a striker for Elijah Adibayo, but if we can't find one, it's not the end of the world. He's a decent striker in the Premier League. But if we don't want to stay still, De Silva and Dao definitely need to be replaced. But it all depends on that free agents, let's remember. Right, guys, we're now into season four with Luton. And we've run into a bit of an issue. I have gone through this centre midfield of free agents list for god knows how long now in every type of way there's no decent ones i can sign the best player is michelle and dory adopo 26 72 overall he's absolutely useless to us but this did give me an idea instead of using the 4-3-3 attack why not use the 4-2-1-3 so instead of finding center mids we go for cdms instead i mean obviously this is a different shape to the 4-3-3 attack but because we got two cdms we'll be much better defensively but considering this guys the best center mid on the free agent system we want to take Luton Town to that next level we've literally got no other choice but to try this out luckily though we have found someone half decent Fernando Campos 21 75 overall I mean his stats aren't that good right now but with him being a regen of somebody I've got a bit of faith he can grow into a good player and for that reason we are going to sign it but guys it doesn't stop there we found another free agent but this time I don't know whose regen this guy is Odit Say 20 77 overall with 18 and a half million already far better stats than fernando campos as well and to be fair i don't care who's regen this guy is all i know he's signing number two season four for us and there we go by some miracle we've managed to sort our midfield out i don't know if long term this is gonna work but for short term at least it looks pretty decent now i did say i wanted to replace adibayo and julio medina looks great i mean he's 21 75 rated i'm not saying he's gonna be the replacement now we've got to send him out on loan for a year or two and then see what happens from there and with the signing of Julio Medina, that's our third and final one of season four. Which means this is the team going into our second year in the Prem. And truth be told, I'm fully expecting us to get Europa League football next year. I mean, obviously, Sato and Campos are our weakest links in the team. But right now, they've got a bag of potential too. So hopefully, at the end of this year, they are looking much better themselves. But this team is far better than it was this time last year. And I'm not even talking about the transfers we've made. I'm talking about the players that were already in this team so hopefully that will make a big difference going into season four and i think it did you know because we're seventh in the premier league and i'm almost positive that gets us europa conference league football but we were one 
points outside the top six and two points outside the top four. It was unbelievably close this year. But we had a stinker in the FA Cup. Bloody Derby beat us in round four. And the Saints knocked us out of the Carabao Cup on pens. But the team is indeed looking pretty damn decent. Our CDMs have improved massively. Adibayo's an 80 rated player now. Everything's looking good. And ladies and gents, our keeper situation is sorted. Giordano is 82 overall at 21 years old. He's going straight into the team next year. And our stats ain't bad at all either. Look at Alexis Vega, man. 35 goal contributions in 43 games. He's legitimately the free agent goat. The thing is now though, guys, apart from Adi Bayo, it's really difficult to figure out where to improve this team because everywhere is actually pretty sorted now. I think unless anybody insane pops up on this free agents list, it's going to be very difficult to figure out who to sign because honestly, we're good to go. But guys, as we enter season number five, I changed how I was searching for free agents and I ended up finding an absolute baller. I've just signed one of the greatest goal scorers of our generation in Harry Kane. I know he's 34 years old, but he's still 84 overall. And considering he was a free agent, I really can't say no to that. And he slots very nicely into that starting 11. I feel like with him up top with Vega and Lanes, we're going to bag more goals than ever. But we've got two more signings to make, remember, guys. And we're going to spend one of them on Simon Bouchette, who looks amazing. Only 18, 78 overall, 23 and a half million. Insane stats as well for his age. Ladies and gents, Campos can take a backseat whilst he goes into the start. 11. But unfortunately, our luck ends there because Hugo Santos was the only other free agent on that entire free agent system that's actually worth signing. To be fair, though, if anything happens to Samuel Berendelli, he could be a half decent replacement at the very best. But with that signing, ladies and gents, that is yet another transfer window done. And here we have an updated look on how the team is going into season number five. And I've just this second realized this, guys. Harry Kane has literally got 31 pays. One earth of a done. And on top of that, guys, we've actually got no European football. I'm looking through the Conference League right now. And as you can see, we're nowhere to be seen. So that means we've got to try and get top six football no matter what this year. And we're off to a bad start. Anyway, we've already lost two games from three. But I've done all I can to make this team better this year it's just up to these guys to do it on the pitch now and that's exactly what they did we are second in the league we were three points away from winning it then again we do have harry kane in the team we were never expected to win trophies were we but the good news is one way or the other next year luton town will indeed be in the champions league we're still panting the FA Cup, though Nottingham Forest knock us out straight away. In Coventry, won the Carabao Cup. That says all you need to know. But man, am I loving the looks of this team. I'm actually really impressed with Harry Kane. 82 overall at 35 years old. That takes some doing. And he even got 20 goal contributions in 28 games. Oh my God, fair play to him, honestly. All jokes aside, that's insane. The problem is, though, Julio Medina, who was supposed to be Adibayo's replacement, isn't up to his level just yet. I mean, he does look good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's good enough. So that does mean next year we will be on the lookout for a striker because if we can't find one, I honestly feel like the UCL is just out of our grasp. Because you can bet that Juve, the Champions League winners this season, have a world-class striker up top, and I feel like that's what we're missing right now. But I can safely say as we enter Season 6 for Luton Town, that just isn't the case anymore. As we've just been able to sign Ollie Watkins, as somehow he is a free agent. He's 85 overall, granted he's on the last leg of his career but he can definitely help us to try win the UCL this year and there he is in the starting team not only that we've got Harry Kane and Adibayo as backups that's not bad going at all is it but something dawned on me looking at the bench we've got no backup wingers which is why Steffi Mavadidi is perfect 77 overall 31 years old he's not a world beater but he'll definitely do as a second choice and as for our final signing guys I'm pretty sure we haven't got a backup keeper which is why Asam Ahmed is perfect 1970 rated and on top of that i'm pretty sure he's just in bono's regen and just like that is indeed our third and final sign in the season six 
Bucks. And looking at the team now, after that transfer window, I'll level with you. I think there's a solid chance we can indeed cause some upsets in the UCL. As for the first time of Luton, we're in this competition. The league phase, as we know, is unforgiving though. So if we are to do well, we're going to have to do well from the get-go. Which is what we haven't done in the Premier League. Already sitting near the relegation zone after three games. But the team right now is the best it has ever been. So I've just got to put my faith into the boys that they can get the job done. But man, Luton have let me down. We didn't even get Champions League football, man. Six in the league. I mean, we've got Europa League football, but that sets us back at least two years. I can't get over that, man. That is absolutely shocking. No luck in the FA Cup either. And Villa have knocked us out in the Carabao Cup. Honestly, this season's been the fatty style so far. But these good news at long last, we are through to the playoffs. At the very least, we just missed out on the round of 16. But if we're going to do this, we're going to have to do it the hard way. And that's exactly what we've done is we've smashed Slavia Praha to qualify for the round of 16. And that's where we just about get past Athletic Bilbao. And we've just beaten Bayern on pens. We could be playing Arsenal, Madrid or Barca. Give me Arsenal, I'll wipe the floor with them. We got Real Madrid and beat them 4-3. Anyway, we've got Arsenal in the final. Oh my god, this is going to be so goddamn satisfying. Saying that though, Arsenal's team is no joke. I mean, look at the state of it. Saka, Tushimeni, Saliba, Calafiori. They've got a team that cannot be taken for granted. But so have we guys, especially when our stats are looking this good. Ollie Watkins got 30 in total, 29 for Vegas, 16 for Adibayo, 12 for Lanes as well. And this is how the team is looking going into the final. And I'll be real with you lot. I don't know why half our team's knackered, man. That is appalling. They should be fitting ready. Because unfortunately, with Luton Town, we haven't won a single trophy despite coming so close to winning the title last year. But in the next 90 minutes, we could change that as all we've got to do is beat Arsenal to make them the world's best club. Arsenal have had a shot from distance and they rattled the ball. What the freaking hell is going on here? Bakayo Saka with another shot and it goes wide. Guys, it is five minutes in and I can already tell Arsenal are going to play 1,000 times better than they actually are. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is such a boring game. Arsenal play nothing but keep ball and then when they come up again, all I can do is block it and they get it back again. I swear to God, I just need one chance and this might just be it as Ollie Watkins is doing his best at the ripe old age of 34 years old, has put us 1-0 up just before half time what a goal ollie watkins single-handedly then just tore arsenal's defense apart what a solo run that was but unfortunately we are nowhere near done with arsenal man we've got at least another 50 minutes to play as we got alexis vega on the ball he's done really well to get past saliba can he make it two and he has alexis vega the free aging goat two nil before half time all we've had in this game are two clear-cut chances and we've taken full advantage of both. But here we come in the second half and we are thirsty for more goals. Diego Lanes is on the wing. We're trying to find Watkins and we can't get to him. But here comes Bouchette. Look at him go. Oh my god. Look at... Oh my god. Bouchette has got pace for days. He's going to dink the keeper. Oh my god. What a goal, Bouchette. Where the freaking hell did that come from? Bouchette literally picks the ball up and darts through absolutely everybody. Dinks the keeper. Keeper should be doing better from there. But that is still a world-class goal. Arsenal are being torn apart for fun, man. Every time I go up and attack, I feel like I'm going to score. But to their credit, they're not giving up. Good save again, keep it. But here come Arsenal once again. Look at this from Arsenal. They're trying. Oh, they might get another goal. And they will. They get a consolation goal. Five minutes to go. But I'm pretty certain that's not going to mean anything. Because to be fair, there's a good chance we get a fourth before the end of this game. Tell you what, Alexis Fig, we're gonna Oh, what a save! Diego Lanes has picked the ball up. Ollie Watkins received on his left foot. Oh, it's a good block. Wait a second, it's a freaking penalty. What on earth was that for? Okay, here's the repeat. It was Calafiori's fault. Was it a handball or something? Oh my god, it ricocheted onto his hand. I mean, I'm not one to turn down a free goal. Alexis Vega, we're gonna smash this straight down the middle, and that is 4-1. 
game over. And it quite literally is game over. We have smashed Arsenal in the UCL final 4-1 with free agents only to make Luton Town the world's best team. And like I just said, that took six seasons, but I feel like if we didn't have a maximum amount of signings every year to make, that would have been way sooner. And whilst it's true we didn't win anything up to the final, we have finally won Luton, the best trophy you can win at club level, and that is, of course, the Champions League. And with that, my job comes to an end with loot. And if you have enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you want more content from me right now, re and if you want to watch more content from me, YouTube recommends you clicking right here. In today's video, I'm randomizing the Premier League. This wheel has every single Premier League team's 14 highest rated players on it. And their fate will be decided by the wheel as all 280 players on this wheel will be randomly put into Premier League teams. And then we'll simulate 10 separate seasons to see if randomizing the Premier League made a difference or if it's the same teams on top. But to first make sure it's completely randomized, I'm going to spin the Premier League wheel and see whose team we are randomizing first. Okay, Bournemouth are up first. And as we spin the play wheel for the first time out of 280 players, the first one up is going to be Moise Caicedo. That's pretty damn decent. And joining game is going to be, who is that going to be? Mark Cucurella, two Chelsea players in a row. I mean, as a Chelsea fan, two pretty decent players off the bat, but who is the third one going to be? I don't know. This is actually nuts. Christopher Nkunku, are you joking? Bournemouth are low-key taking all of Chelsea's players. Who's player number four going to be? If this is another Chelsea player, by the way, Bernardo Silva, that's huge. The first four players for Bournemouth are absolutely fantastic. Who's five going to be there? Who's the fifth player going to be? Okay, Igor sent to back from Brighton, I believe. And joining him, it is going to be, I can't see the name, Sammy Smodix. And following him is going to be Federico Chiesa from Liverpool. Bournemouth are going to be stacked at this rate. And following Chiesa is going to be, I believe that's Yuri Tielemont. So that's eight down, six players to go. Who is playing number nine going to be, though? That's the question. Richarlison, eh, 50-50. And following him is going to be, who is up next? That is Matthias. Is Jensen. I believe he's a Brentford player. I could be very wrong in saying that, but I'm almost positive I'm right. Who's going to be next, though, is the question. Morato. Okay, I believe he's another centre back. No idea what team he plays for, though, to be honest, off the top of my head. But the next player up is Aaron Wambi Saka. Fair play. Down to the final two players for Bournemouth. Now, I'd say they've done pretty well so far out of this wheel. Are they going to do better? Vitaly Janalt. But the question is who is the last player going to be for them? Ross Bond. Barkley. I mean, that's one way to end it, isn't it? Well, that's the first team done. 19 more to do. So who is the next team to get randomised? Brentford, it's the bees turn. But are they going to have a good a start as Bournemouth did? Or are they going to fall flat on their faces? Okay, James Madison, that's a really good start. Who's playing number two going to be, though? That is the question at the minute. No way. Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, my God. Okay, they're stacked already. As player number three is up, and he's going to be Joel Valtman. Three players down, 11 to go. And player number four is going to be Jan Bednarek. And following him is going to be, I don't know who that is, Young Min Sun from the Ball Jobs. That's huge as well. Honestly, so far, Brentford and Bournemouth have done amazing randomizing their teams. Is it going to get better? No, not really. Tyrone Mings. But overall, still a very solid centre back, as the next player up is going to be Matthias Fernandez is not a bad player himself. As the next player up is going to be... Who the hell is this? Jen Liske just. I'm pretty certain he plays for Ipswich Town. But I'm sure if I'm wrong, you guys will definitely correct me in the comments section down below. As next up is going to be Flynn Downs. I'm pretty sure he's a West Ham player. Nine down, a further five. Spin to this wheel for Brentford to go as pick number 10. Nick Pope. Okay, they got a decent keeper. And I've just this second realised that's one thing that Bournemouth didn't get from the wheel. But the next player up from this wheel is Manuel Agate from United. Honestly, Brentford are looking like early favourites to do very well in this video as the next player up for them is Morgan Gibbs White. He was the 12th, but this is pit number 13, Sasa Lukic. And finally, pit number 14 for the Bees is going to be 
Kenny Tete. Wow, what a way to end it. So that's two teams down. We've still got 18 to go. And it's time to travel to Anfield because Liverpool are up next. And they're doing very well under Arna Slot this year. But will they do well after randomising their team as their first pick? Is Jorginho not a bad start? And their second pick of 14 is going to be... Oh, you can't write that. Virgil van Dijk's going nowhere. That is actually insanely lucky when you think about it. But they've got another 12 to go. Pick number three. Three is going to be Philip Billing. And following him, it is going to land on Jamie Vardy, one of the Premier League's all-time best goal scorers, if you ask me. And following Jamie Vardy, it is going to land on Adam Wharton, a pretty big baller in real life. But not ideal for a one-season simulation in career mode, as the next person up is Harry Maguire. Oh, my God. Virgil van Dijk and Harry Maguire would low-key ball out, though, at the back. Then again, maybe not. Every time they concede, it definitely be Maguire's fault. But the next player up is going to be Calvin Bassey. Okay, not bad at all. They've got the fair share of defenders Liverpool now have. They need a couple other positions to fill in. Like, oh my god, they got Trent Alexander-Arnold now as well. That's actually nuts. Liverpool so far have been genuinely so lucky with their picks as the next pick is going to be John Stones. Oh my god, that is a really good back four now. I mean, John Stones, Virgil van Dijk and Trent at the back. That isn't bad at all, is it? As their next pick is going to be Reese Nelson. That's 10 down now, though. Four picks to go with pick number 11 is going to be Manuel Akanji. Seriously, though, how many freaking defenders do Liverpool actually want at this point? Okay, I think they're about to get a striker in Kai Havertz. That's not bad at all. With only two picks left, they could do with more players like him being landed on. Okay, that's decent Pedro Neto. As we spin this wheel for the 14th and final time with Liverpool, they're going to land on Jean-Philippe Matete. Again, not a decent way to end it. But that's only three teams down with 17 to go. So what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to continue randomizing each Premier League team. And the next time you see me, every Premier League team will be randomized. And there we go, guys. It was a second for you, a complete day for me. And as you can see, every single Premier League team has indeed been randomized. Some are certainly looking better than others. Trust me when I say, guys, randomizing the Premier League may actually cause a couple of upsets and this is what i'm talking about because this is how bournemouth are lined up look at the state of that team the only real bad thing about bournemouth is they've got travis in goal but with that defensive lineup in midfield in front of him he shouldn't be too bad the bench and reserves isn't looking that bad either honestly already bournemouth are looking pretty damn solid in the prep but so are arsenal guys as this is their team after the wheel has randomized its squad and it's a fantastic squad foden isat solanke luis diaz adogi and a half decent keeper in Neto, just like Bournemouth, Arsenal are going to be up there. As for Aston Villa, this is how their team is lined up, and it would be stronger, but I'm not joking when I say this, the game literally won't let me swap any players around. I mean, I'm trying to swap Gapo with Philogene, for example, and the game just isn't having any of it. And as you can see with Ward Prowse on the bench, you've got Philogene, you've got Gapo, you've got Castagne, it would be a stronger team if the game actually let me put it out. As for Brentford, this is a very good team. I mean, the start Starting 11 looks absolutely phenomenal, even without some of the changes that need to be made. Because on the bench, you've got KDB, Fabio Carvalho, and James Madison, man. If you put them into the team, this would be a title contender. Moving on to Brighton, though, they are one team that really got shafted by the wheel, as this is their strongest starting 11. And when Darwin Nunes is your strongest player in your team, that's when you know you're going to have difficulty. To be fair, they've got Vicario on the bench with Gundogan and Martin Odegaard, but I don't think those three are going to be enough to help Brighton win anything. And honestly, it's the same story for Chelsea as the wheel really shafted these boys. I mean, Bruno Fernandes is our strongest player. That's not a bad thing, by the way. Bruno is a fantastic player, but realistically, he's the only real standout talent that Chelsea have got. I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea faced a relegation scrap or two. So nobody can accuse me of favouritism as this is Crystal Palace's side and oh my God, that is actually a lot better than I remember. Adding on to the fact that Jaden Sancho on the bench, you can go on the right side of the pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, Palace might actually cause an upset or two. Saying that though, Everton don't look bad themselves as this is how their team looks in honestly up and down the pitch. It's a very balanced, high quality side. I mean, on the bench, there's Pedro Porri, you've got Kieran Trippier, you've got Maxence Lacroix, you've got freaking Wook Fias and Sugarwari. And those players would definitely improve that back four. And hopefully, when the simulations go through, the manager will just take care of them.
of that, and that will hopefully make it a lot more interesting. As for Fulham, guys, this is a mixed bag. They've got Ballon d'Or winner Rodri in the team. They've got a very strong defence and keeper, but aside from that, the rest of the team's actually quite pants. Actually, to be fair, you look at the reserves. Saka's there, you've got Mohamed Kodos, Almiron, Calvin Phillips, Sven Botman as well. So when you add that onto this team, yeah, I reckon they'll do all right, actually. Ipswich, though, I feel like we're going to be a dark horse, guys. I know the starting 11 is a real mixed bag of really good talent and then really poor talent. But then you look at the guy on the bench, guys. Mohamed Salah, Leon Bailey, Kufal, Samedo. You've got freaking Jordan Pickford in the reserves. And when they get thrown into this team, it's still going to be a mixed bag of talent. But it'll definitely be a dark horse, I'm telling you. And Leicester City is another team to watch out for. The starting 11, just like Ipswich Town, doesn't look all that much. We're in the reserves. You've got Munoz. And then you look at the freaking bench. Nathan Ake, Gabriel Jesus, Timo Werner. I mean, Jesus probably won't get a look in with Haaland in the team, but Werner certainly will, and so will Ake. I'm telling you, watch out for Leicester. As for Liverpool, though, guys, as you can see, they did keep two of their best players in Van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold. That bodes well for them, as their bench and reserves is actually pretty stacked with talent as well. But with Alisson nowhere to be seen, guys, this may turn the tide for Liverpool in a bad way. As for United, though, I feel like they are absolutely screwed, as this is their strongest team, as far as I'm aware, anyway, guys. They've got Gamares, they've got freaking Yaro, they've got Kepa and goal. They do have Alexis McAllister on the reserves, which I've got no doubt in my mind he'll get game time once the simulations kick in, but right now, I'm actually saying United are one of the favourites to get relegated. The same can't be said for City, though, is this is how they're looking without me being able to actually sort it out, and as you can see, their defence has taken a significant hit. I mean, granted, they do have a pretty strong bench, but no real solid defenders, and I feel like that's what's going to let them down. And it might let Newcastle United down, because midfield up, they actually look really solid. I mean, to be fair, they do have Vastu Penan and De Sassi on the bench, but I don't think they're going to be enough to help Newcastle win any trophies. Nottingham Forest, on the other hand, don't look bad at all. I mean, their starting team looks pretty damn solid. I mean, Malo Gusto's in the reserves, Senesi is Hendo Diop. Then you got Rhys James, Evanielsen, Anderson as well. I feel like their fullbacks might let them down, but overall, guys, it's a very strong side. As for Southampton, unfortunately, I feel like they're screwed. I mean, their midfield solid, but they've only got one decent defender in Andrew Robertson. I mean, yes, the squad depth they've got is actually pretty stacked, but there's no decent defenders. And honestly, in the Premier League, I reckon they're going to get annihilated. But moving on to Spurs, and it pains me to say, but their team looks very, very strong, guys. I mean, I haven't even been able to sort this team out properly, and it already looks like like one of the best I've seen. I mean, they got McGinn on the bench who can go in Marky Moore's position, but the one position that will let them down is their keeper role because a 73 rated keeper ain't going to win you anything. As for West Ham, again, a mixed bag. Some real quality in this team, but overall, I don't think there's enough to do anything. Saying that, they got Majrawi, they got Diogo Dello, Esri Conter on the reserves. And you put that into that back four, maybe that changes things, but I'm not too sure about that. And last but not least, we have Wolves, and this is their starting 11 off face value. And honestly, it's actually a pretty strong team. Some decent players in our reserves, Anthony Gordon, McNeil, Ayu, Mangala. But their defence will massively let them down, man. They do have Martinez in goal, who in my opinion is fantastic, but I don't think he's going to be enough. And there we go, guys. You've seen every single Premier League team randomised in all of their glory. But now it's time to simulate 10 separate seasons to see if randomised in the Premier League actually made a difference or whether it's the same teams on top. So here we are, guys, at the end of our first simulation, and it's already taken effect, guys. United have been relegated alongside Everton and the Saints. I mean, I really don't care who wins the title at this point. Randomised in the Premier League has absolutely worked. I mean, as we go up the table, no real notable name. Ipswich Town finish sixth. That's actually nuts. Unfortunately, though, City do end up winning the Premier League, so it looks like some things just don't change. However, there's a massive upset straight away as Wolves beat Arsenal in the FA Cup final. And Crystal Palace beat West Ham to win the Carabao Cup. 
So far, I'd say randomizing the Premier League is actually a success, but that's only one season. We've got nine more to go. Make that eight more to go. A season two is done, and this pains me to say, but Chelsea, Palace, and Wolves have been relegated. I did actually call this, to be fair, but seeing it actually happen is a different story. But as we move up the table, United are 10th in the league. Leicester are 11th. Who's won the Premier League? They're freaking hell. Man City have won it again. I swear, if we go the entire 10 seasons and City win the Prem, every single year i'm gonna be devastated but at least they haven't won the fa cup that honor goes to newcastle united this time and west ham have won the carabao cup so so far that means in the two seasons we've randomized the premier league five premier league clubs have won a trophy the question is though guys out of all the 20 clubs that are playing in the premier league who's going to end the 10 seasons with the most trophies unfortunately guys as we end season three it's looking likely that it's going to be man city they've won the third premier league title in a freaking row i swear this game's coded for Man City to win because that's just unfair. But as we move down the table, United, Arsenal, West Ham, Spurs are all mid to lower mid table, so at least we know it's working for some teams. But unfortunately, the Saints, Forest, and Ipswich Town have indeed been relegated. Thankfully, City haven't won the FA Cup as that honour once again goes to Wolves. And West Ham win another trophy, so that means that Wolves and West Ham are both tied on two now. I know City have won three titles in a row, but I don't think that's going to last like that for much longer. I definitely feel like by the end of this video, we're going to have a new king of English football. But guys, Season 4 simulation starts with a shocker because Aston Villa finished rock freaking bottom. On top of that, Arsenal are 6th, Spurs are 7th, Chelsea 9th, and United are 11th. I'm telling you, that randomizers really kicked some teams in the dirt. And thankfully, we've got a new Premier League win. Liverpool have won the Premier League this time. They've just scraped it against Fulham, though. I mean, Man City did finish fifth, but look at the top four, man. Liverpool, Fulham, Bournemouth and Leicester. Not even halfway through and we've had more shocks than I actually thought we'd get. And we get another shock, guys, as Man United go from being relegated to winning the FA Cup. And Brighton win their first trophy too, winning the Carabao Cup, beating City to do it as well. I've got to admit, as a neutral, I'm kind of happy with how this is going. Let me know in the comments who you think will win the most trophies by the end of the 10 seasons. If you said Man City, you might just be right guys because they've just won their fourth premier league title and as we move down the table honestly i don't really see them many differences it looks quite normal to me but then you look at the bottom five united very nearly got relegated again they just escaped on goal difference that's crazy, isn't it? Last year they won a trophy. This year they just about scraped survival. But speaking of trophies, Liverpool have just won their second as they win the FA Cup. And Arsenal have won their first after beating Brighton to win the Carabao Cup. And that's us halfway through the simulations, guys. And the one thing I'm hoping for for the rest of the simulations I do is different Premier League winners, man. I'm sick of the same teams winning it all the time. And it looks like I've got me wishes. Liverpool have won the Premier League instead of City. I know they've already won it in this video, but at least it's a different team. As for the mid-table spots, Chelsea attempt Spurs are 14th for the hell. No way. United have been relegated again. Oh my god. So far in this video, Chelsea have been relegated once and United have been relegated twice. That's mental. On top of that, Bournemouth claim their first trophy as they win the FA Cup. And Palace win their second win in the Carabao Cup. But United being relegated again, man. That is insane. We're having massive differences at the bottom half of the table. We just need to see the same sort of thing happening at the top of the Premier League. And guys, it's sort of happening as Liverpool once again win the Premier League. But Arsenal just missed out on goal difference. As we move down the table, Ipswich are 8th. United this time aren't relegated. But Spurs are 13th. And Chelsea have been relegated for the second time. So United have been relegated to us. And now Chelsea freaking have. I just wish the top half of the Premier League was mixed up as much as the bottom half would. That would complete this Premier League. But as for the FA Cup, City win their first as they beat Leeds 2-1. And Brighton win their second trophy as they win the Carabao Cup. Well, coming back to the Premier League, guys, I actually don't think any other team aside from Liverpool and City are actually going to win it. I mean, the third closest are definitely going to be Arsenal. But I swear, if Chelsea get relegated once more in the next three seasons, I'm going to be pissed. Thankfully, this season, Chelsea are safe, but City win yet another Premier League title. But as we go down the table, not much is different, but oh my god, United just about scraped survival yet again. Honestly, within the next two seasons, I reckon they're definitely going to 
going to get relegated again. As for the FA Cup, though, Nottingham Forest win their first trophy by beating Brighton 2-1. And Fulham beat Newcastle to win their first trophy in the Carabao Cup. But with two seasons to go, I'd love a new Premier League winner, man. Maybe a Fulham, maybe a Newcastle. As long as it's not the ball jobs, I don't really care. And guys, I cannot believe it. Arsenal have won the Premier League. We finally got a different Premier League winner. I mean, it's a shame it's Arsenal, but it is what it is. As for the mid-table spots, United are 11th, Chelsea 9th, but nothing's really out of the ordinary. As Ipswich, Pallies and the Saints all get relegated. As for the FA Cup, Aston Villa win it, and if I'm not mistaken, that's their first trophy won. But Liverpool win the Carabao Cup, adding on to their long list of trophies they've won in this video. But there's only one more simulated season left in this video, so the question is, who's going to be the king? of English football by the end of it. Now for our 10th and final simulation, I thought I'd do it back to front this time. Starting with the FA Cup, Aston Villa win their second trophy. And Liverpool win yet another Carabao Cup. I'm telling you, they're really trying to top that leaderboard at the end of this video. As for the Premier League, the bottom three, Everton, the Saints and Ipswich all get relegated. But United do come close once again to that third relegation, but they do just escape it. As for mid-table slash top 10, there's nothing out of the ordinary really Chelsea or seventh and Arsenal are actually fifth this time but Man City win the Premier League once again in our 10th and final simulation but Fulham did come close guys four points off the title themselves but the question is now who's won the most trophies over the course of the last 10 seasons and you probably guessed it was indeed Man City over the last 10 seasons they actually won seven trophies Liverpool were a very close second, but the rest of the teams just won a couple of trophies or just one. But what's impressed me the most is more than half of the Premier League won one trophy. But Man City do remain the kings of English football, even after randomising the damn league. And that's where we're going to leave this video, guys. If you have enjoyed me randomizing the Premier League and want to see more content like this, drop this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you enjoyed this video, why not click here? Because YouTube recommends you to watch this as well. Over the last 10 years, Scottish football has been dominated by Celtic. I mean, they've won nine out of the last 10 league titles. That's actually insane. But European football is a different story. They haven't won European silverware in over 50 years now. So today, we're going to change that. As I've become Celtic's brand new manager with the goal of winning them the Champions League. But it's not going to be as simple as that. I've taken Celtic and their biggest rivals ranges out of the Scottish Premiership and put them into the Premier League. Celtic have proved they can do it in Scotland but now it's time to see if they can do it in England. So here is the starting 11 we've loaded into with Celtic and this is no disrespect intended. I genuinely did not think it was this good. I mean there's Kyogo Furuhashi, Carter Vickers, Callum McGregor and of course Kasper Schmeichel. Oh my god he's almost 40. Not to mention players like Nicholas Korn, Dyson Maeda and of course Rio Hutate who've all got quite a bit of potential in their locker. But with every positive comes a negative. Four of our players are currently over 30 years old and I feel like it's my job with Celtic to make sure that that's not the case anymore. But we've only got 80 million to spend in season one. Bro, this is going to be difficult. I mean, yes, it's a decent team, don't get me wrong, but will they survive the Premier League? I'm not sure we will at the minute because as you go through the Premier League, I'm not seeing any teams that we are absolutely guaranteed to take six points away from this year. It's going to be an absolute struggle from start to finish this season is. But that's where I come in, guys. It's my job to make sure that this Celtic team not only survives in the Premier League, but thrives in it. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just start with the basics with the tactics. I'm going custom with the 4-3-3 holding with a counter-attacking build-up play and balanced defensive approach with a pretty deep line. I mean, Maeda, Furuhashi and also Nicholas Kun have all got a lot of pace about them, so hopefully when we're hitting teams on the break, this will actually work. As for the player instructions, our front three are going to be up the pitch. Advance forward with Furuhashi with our wingers being inside forward. Tatata is going to be our playmaker with McGregor being our a deep line playmaker and Bernard is going to be our box to box midfielder. Don't get me wrong, I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I feel like the counter attacking style of play is our best shot to survive in our first year in the Prem, especially with only 18 mil to spend. But that does raise a question, doesn't it? Where 
do we actually put the 80 million? Because quite frankly, our front three are pretty decent. Our midfield's weak, but it's not that important that that's the best part of the pitch for season one. It should either go on our goalkeeper or our back line. Because rule number one of the Premier League, if you don't have a good keeper or good defence or both, you're going to get annihilated. Now, call me crazy, guys, but I'm actually going to keep Kasper Schmeichel for one year. I mean, granted, he's almost 40, but he's 80 overall. And if I'm not mistaken, he's actually won the Premier League before with Leicester City. So he's defo got the experience we need in between the sticks. So that just leaves our back line. And I feel like a better sense about than scales will go a long way in keeping us in the prem. But we do only have 18 mil, remember. So our options aren't actually amazing. But there is one centre back that we could sign. And in my opinion, he's one of the greatest centre backs the Premier League has ever seen. You guessed it, guys. Harry freaking Maguire. 31 years old now. 80 overall. Got tons of Premier League experience. And honestly, that's exactly what we need plus he's one of the greatest defenders of all time as i've just said and after spending 10 million pounds on the greatest of all time that's our defense sorted out for season one we only have two million to spend now guys his contract was absolutely mental so we literally can't make any more business happen in season one the only thing we can do are loan players out and that's exactly what i'm doing with these five players here i mean i'm sending james forrest out on loan just to get him out of the way of the team but the rest of these guys i've got a decent amount of potential in them so hopefully when they come back they'll come back a much better player but this is how we are lined up going into season one am i nervous about this a little bit yes i don't feel like 18 million was enough to help us survive the Premier League but you never know guys Rangers are also in the Premier League with us so maybe they'll help us survive but judging by the end of season stats I reckon we've done a little bit better than surviving I mean Furuhashi's he's killed it with 21 goal contributions 20 for our CDM McGregor 21 for Nicholas Kuhn and 11 for Maide good old Schmeichel is still holding up as well 77 overall at 38 what an absolute legend and on paper, guys, this team genuinely looks pretty damn decent. But the question is, how have we actually done in the Prem? We've absolutely smashed it. We are top eight in our first season in the Prem. How the hell have we pulled that off? Literally every single team around us, in my opinion, is actually better on paper than us, man. All I can say is it has to boil down to our tactics. We must have got them spot on. But fair play to Rangers. They also got it right this year, surviving as they finished 14th as well. We didn't do too bad in the FA Cup either. We did make it to round five, but bloody Huddersfield knocked us out. Come on, man. Saying that, though, they did make the FA Cup final. They got annihilated, but they still made the FA Cup final. But we had a stinker in the Carabao Cup, man. Everton knocked us out in round two. But I am so proud of this team, man. They were right up against it this year, but they've surpassed all expectations. But to get us from 7th in the Premier League table to getting inside the top 6 or maybe even the top 4, there's a lot of work that we still need to do to this Celtic team. For example, next year we need to be replacing Kasper Schmeichel. As legendary as he is and as good as he's been this year, he won't be able to keep this going for one more year like we need him to. So for that reason, we are getting someone better next year. To be fair though, I'm picking on Schmeichel the entire Higher team still needs a lot of improvement up and down the pitch. There's no position in that team as far as I'm concerned that's safe next year. And hopefully next year's budget will actually be much better considering what we've actually been able to do with Celtic in Season 1. But before we find out, if you're enjoying this video with Celtic in the Premier League, drop this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. So guys, Season 2 has just begun and we've got 47 million to spend this year, man. That's way better than just 18. And like I said last year, no position in the this team is indeed safe however i have thought about it and i've narrowed it down to two positions i need to sort out the first one obviously being Kasper schmeichel i mean he's retiring at the end of the year that's all i need to say about that really but i'm sorry celtic fans greg taylor's time in the starting 11 is done he's a decent player don't get me wrong but if we are to take celtic to that next level we definitely need somebody better than him i mean granted our front three isn't amazing and neither is our midfield but our defense and keeper position are so much more important than them pair combined but whilst we've got 47 million guys, it's not exactly 147 million, is it? We've still got to be pretty smart with how we spend this. And that is exactly why I have just spent 3.2 million on goalkeeper Peter Galashi. Granted, he is 35 years old, but he's 83 rated. And I know I said at the start of this video, it was my job to get the old players out of this team and introduce more youth talent. But right now, he is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. But Jose Gaia is a bit more of a longer solution to that 
left back role. He's 30, he's 82 rated. I mean, this guy is an absolute beast, which is why he's playing for AC Milan to begin with. But he's not anymore, as I've just spent 28.3 million to sign him on a three year deal, leaving us 7 million in total. But we've got contracts to sort out, we've got to sort the coaching system out. I think that's our transfer window done for season two. And don't get me wrong, guys, I know this team isn't exactly world class just yet, but we are slowly but surely getting them to where we want them to be. Do I think we're going to finish inside the top eight like we did last year? Absolutely not. I do feel like last year was a one season wonder. However, if we are at least competitive, Competitive, I won't be too fussed with that. But something tells me, looking at these stats, we've done better than last year. I mean, Furuhashi's got 30 goal contributions, 50 for Nicholas Kun, 11 and 1 for Maeda, 9 and 5 for Paolo Bernardo, too. And you look at this team, guys, and obviously there's a lot of work that still needs duty, but for the most part, it is absolutely a contender to get top six football. But guys, we've been so misled. We just about scraped top 10 football. And the worst thing is, Rangers actually finished above us. Oh my god. God, that is unacceptable. Celtic fans, I'm sorry. That's insane, you know. I thought for sure from those stats we'd have actually done a little bit better than last year, but apparently that's just not the case. We didn't do well in the FA Cup either. Newcastle knocked us out in round four. In the bottle, Jobs knocked us out to the Carabao Cup. Yeah, we're moving on. We're moving swiftly on. And we move on to the Conference League, and I thought we'd qualified for this. I just wasn't too sure because obviously last year we did finish seventh, but here we finished 16th in the league phase, which means we're in the playoffs. And we're through to the round of 16 after smashing BK Hack in 6-1 on aggregate. But FC Michelin knock us out in the round of 16, 5-3. Bloody hell. So even though the team's literally never looked better, it's very clear that we've still got so much more work to do with Celtic to get them to that next level. And if that budget isn't on our side next year, we may have to actually face the idea of selling one or two of our best players, man. I don't want to do it, but sometimes you got to do things that you don't want to do in career mode. Especially if that means jumping from 10th in the league to to the top four because sometimes all it takes is a couple of sales to make that happen but guys as season three arrives we haven't been back by the board again man 54 mil is all we got to spend hang on a minute why is it saying two billion jesus i wish we had that money we'd have no issues in season three now we can do quite a bit with 54 mil with this team but i don't feel like it's enough to take salty to that top six where i want them to be so yes guys we will be looking at selling one or two maybe three of our highest value players the question is who the freaking hell am I actually going to choose? I think Furuhashi is going to be one of them, you know, he's 31 years old now, he's worth 20 million, we could get about 25 for him. Maybe Rio Atate as well, he's worth 18 million himself, 28 years old, and we've got Engels to go in a spot who's six years younger and only two ratings lower than him. I've also decided to sell Maguire, Callum McGregor, and also Greg Taylor. I mean, Maguire and McGregor, they're both 33, so that makes sense. As for Greg Taylor, we're not using him because of Gaia, so that kind of makes sense as well. And there we go. Almost everybody on that transfer list has been sold and sold for quite a bit of money as well. The only player we couldn't sell is the greatest defender of all time, Harry Maguire. I mean, the disrespect on this guy, it's just not good enough. But our budget is 141 million to spend now, guys. Now, that that kind of money I can definitely work with. As looking at the team, a striker is in need. We definitely need a CDM, another centre back over Maguire, and a new goalkeeper over Galashi. Remember, he was only a short term solution to a long term problem. And you know what? I'll admit, I'm sort of doing the same thing again with the keeper role. Bryce Sambit is the player I'm going to sign. He's 32, 83 overall, but with him being 32, that means we've got at least two or three years with him in between the sticks. And he was quite cheap as we only had to spend 80 and a half million on it. As the next position we're focusing on is that centre-back role where Ladislav Kretschy looks really good. 27, 81 overall. And if you look at his stats, 74 pace, 79 defending and 84 physicality, I reckon he'll do just fine alongside Cameron Carter-Vickers. And just like that, we signed him on a three-year deal for 31.6 million. And we've still got 85 million. Ladies and gents, we are swimming in money. Which is why I'm signing Florentino from Benfica, still in his mid-20s, 83 overall, and judging by his defensive and physical stats, he looks like a monster that can do a really good job in the middle of the park for us. And he only cost us 27 million to sign as well. And looking at the team now, guys, it is safe to say we are beginning to turn a corner with Celtic. We just need a better striker up top who's going to be as good as Furuhashi was and will be set for season three. Which is why I've just signed Adamola Lukman from Barcelona for 42.2 million. Only 28, 83 rated already 
already. And guys, if you actually look at his stats, 85 pace, 82 shooting and 87 dribbling. That's very similar to how Furuhashi's stats looked. And look at the state of this team now, man. We've only got two players under 80 overall in the entire squad. I feel like season three is legitimately going to be our best one yet now. I mean, we brought a better keeper in in Samba, improved our defense with Kretzi, improved our midfield with Florentino, and brought in a very suitable replacement for Furuhashi. I'm expecting us to finish inside the top six this year, man. I want us to get European football once again for season four, or at the very, very least, finish higher than Rangers. But guys, we then need up doing both. We are top four in the Premier League. We've got Salty back into European football. And unfortunately for Rangers, whilst we're thriving, they ain't surviving the Premier League. They are inside the bottom three. They're going down to the championship. We're still panting the FA Cup though, guys. Chelsea knocked us out in round three. But we did make the semis of the Carabao Cup. Liverpool battered us on aggregate 5-2. But looking at the team now, I absolutely maintain that making those sales earlier this year was the right choice. I reckon budget depending next year, we could actually do pretty damn well in the Champions League. And for his first season in the Prem, Lutman did pretty damn well. 24 and 8 for him, 14 and 7 for Nicholas Cunn, and 14 and 4 for Dyson Maide. I'm looking forward to season 4, guys. Our first season with Celtic in the Champions League. The problem is that we can't pull any punches in season 4's transfer window. Which means that weak links will indeed be replaced like Dyson Maide by a mile one of the weakest links in the team right now. Arn Engels is another one. He's only 80 overall himself. But once we replace both of these players, ladies and gents, Honestly, things are going to be looking very up for Celtic. But in season four, I am absolutely disappointed with the board. 67 million is all they've given us. We got to the Carabao Cup semis and we finished third in the Prem and that's all they can give us. Are you taking the mick? Now we can still replace Engels and Maeda with that kind of money, but the quality of play we'd get for replacing them pair won't be as good as I want them to be. Now Engels is only 23 years old, 80 overall. I reckon he's got a bit more left to give Celtic. So for one more season at the very least, he's safe in the starting 11. But my Maeda is almost 30 years old. I don't think he's got much left in the gas tank to give Celtic. He's going to be transfer listed. I'm going to get as much money as possible for him and I'm going to add that to the budget. And hopefully that 67 mil will turn into about 80 or 90 million. And with that money, we're going to bring in a proper world-class left winger. And there we go. He's gone to Newcastle for 21 and a half million. I'm thinking our budget's going to be looking a little bit better now. And it is, guys, 88 million now to spend. Ladies and gentlemen, we can defo make this money work. Because I've found a certain Jeremy Doc whose contract's running out. He's in his mid-twenties, 86 overall. I literally can't think of a better left winger to replace my Eden. And considering how good he is, we've just got the bargain of the century, only spending 54 million on him. Now that does leave us 26 million, and I don't feel like we're in a position yet to just throw that money down the drain. Now we could go ahead with the original plan and replace on Engels, but honestly, I've actually convinced myself to give him another chance so he's staying put. However, we could improve Cameron Carter Vickers. I mean, he's almost 30, 82 rated. He's not got much left to give because I've seen his development plan, ladies and gents. And with him being worth 21 and a half million, if we are short of funds for his replacement, we could always throw him into the deal as well. But guys, I have found his perfect replacement, Sven Botman, 27, 85 overall, and his contract's running out as well. It'll still cost between 34 and 43 million, but that's where Cameron Carter Vickers will come into play. So there's my offer 20 mil and Cameron Carter Vickers. I don't know if he's going to go for this, but it's worth a shot, isn't it? I really do hope he does go for it, though, because he. Oh, thank God for that. Shabby Alonso, you legend. And just like that, with the signing of Sven Botman, that's our transfer window done. And the improvement in this Celtic team is actually staggering, man. It's so much better than it was four years ago. And that's good for us as we are finally in the Champions League where I've accidentally over-simulated. We've already played one game against Juve, but we picked up a draw, which against them is pretty decent. But so far, it's a stinker start to the season, man. Four games played and we've only won one. Celtic, what are you playing at? But looking at this team, I'm not too worried about how we're going to do in the Premier League. I feel like top four is secure. It's just the Champions League I'm a bit worried about. And what did I tell you? Top four is indeed secure, ladies and gentlemen. You CL football's on its way to Celtic next year as well. 
Well, this is kind of crazy. I wanted to check to see how Rangers did in the championship. They only managed the playoffs, so next year they may or may not be joining us once again in the Prem. But look at this. We made the FA Cup final, just falling short to Chelsea in the end. Come on, man. We just fell short of winning our first trophy. And we once again made the semis of the Carabao Cup, but this time Man City battered us instead of Liverpool. But as for the Champions League, we actually qualified automatically to the knockouts. That's actually insane when you think about it. I mean, teams like City, AC Milan, Juve, Real Madrid didn't even qualify automatically. That's nuts, you know. But we qualified for the quarters, guys, as we beat AK Athens 4-3 on aggregate. And we're in the semis after beating Athletic Bilbao. We could be playing Juve, City or Roma. Oh my god, give me Roma. I can't freaking believe it. City knocked us out again with the exact same aggregate. Nah, that's a joke, man. That's actually embarrassing. But you know what? They didn't win it. Roma beat them 7-6 on penalty so there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel but i don't get how this team got battered by city twice in a row man i mean this team is freaking amazing and as well as that Adamola lutman's had a great campaign 37 goals 11 assists in 59 games not to mention bernardo Korn, doku and palmer having great campaigns as well Maybe for season 5, we just focus on the weakest links in our starting 11, man. I'm not too sure our midfield needs sorting out, but there are other positions we could focus on. For example, Jose Guy is 33 years old now. He served his purpose. He's been a great left back for us, but right now, I do feel like it's time to replace him. And it sucks to say, but Johnston's time is up as well. It'll take him 24 weeks to become an 85 rated right back. And after that, it looks like his development plan has stopped. And it's the same story for Nicholas Cunn, and this really does break my up because I actually really like this guy in the team. This is of course all budget depending but if we do get the money to sort all this out we could be the next Champions League winners. Okay Celtic's board of directors are officially a joke. We've only got 80 million to spend. I mean need I remind you what we did last year. What more do we have to do to get more than 100 million in the budget? I mean there's no way with 80 million we're sorting all three of those positions out man. We're gonna have to sell a couple of players again. And this might surprise you but I'm only selling Gaia and Nicholas Kunk because I've checked all their development plans. Those have stayed the same, but Johnston, on the other hand, is a bit different. He's actually still improving according to his development plan. Seven weeks to become an 85-rated defender. I mean, I can't not that, can I? But I could not Gaia and Kun, which is why I've sold them both. Kun's gone for 61.4 mil and Gaia for just under 29 million, giving us 168 million. Now, that's the kind of budget I actually expected Celtic to give us this season. And once we sort our fullback position and our right wing position out with absolute world-class talent i don't feel like there's any team in the world that can stop us winning that champions league which is why I pulled no punches with our right winger position as I've just spent 73.5 million on Takfusa Kubo. 27 years old, 88 overall. Could we have found anybody better to replace Nicholas Cunn? And following him is Fedi Kadioglu from Bayern. Only 28 himself, 86 rated. Look at his stats, man. He's so good. And that's why I've just spent a further 70 million pounds to sign him on a four-year deal. And looking at this starting team now, it's pretty hard to argue that this isn't one of the best teams in the world at this point but we do have one problem guys our bench isn't exactly filled with a lot of quality is it and if we are to do well in the prem and ucl again we've got to be replacing quality with quality the problem is guys i've legitimately looked through this free agents list so much over the last 10 minutes there's nobody here that's decent and we've only got 13 million to spend honestly at this point i reckon we just take our chances as we are in the champions league once again and to be fair with a week team last year we made the semi-final so hopefully now that we strengthened all the weaknesses we should be able to get all the way to the final but not only do i want to win the champions league i want the premier league man it's not been the best start but last year wasn't either and we still finished third either way though guys with how we've got the team lined up for season number five this is our best shot yet at winning the premier league and the ucl guys i'm convinced ea have made it impossible to win the premier league man we are third in the league for the third season running Freaking Arsenal won the Premier League. If they can do it, bloody anybody can. But look at this. Man City lost to Blackburn Rovers in the FA Cup Final 3-1. Okay, it's official. Anything can happen in FC 25. As we lose to West Ham 1-0 in round three of the Carabao Cup. We just don't have much luck in these competitions, do we? But it's a good start in the Champions League. We go through automatically to the round of 16 after finishing eighth. And we beat Inter Milan in the round of 16. And we've beaten Marseille in the quarters. We could be playing after 
Atletico, Leipzig or Chelsea. Honestly, Leipzig or Chelsea will do me. Do not give me Atletico. We got Leipzig and we're playing Atletico in the final. The strongest team out of the three, man. Come on, for God's sake, EA. But to be fair, it could be worse. We could be Rangers who've just about scraped promotion back into the Prem. But looking at Atletico's team, honestly, aside from it being five at the back, that is a very, very beatable side. Especially when our front three just score for fun, ladies and gents. 30 and 10 for Lutman, 23 and 16 for Takfusa Kubo, 16 and 12 for Bernardo, and 11 and 3 for Doku. And this is the team, ladies and gents, in all of its glory heading into the UCL final. And if I do say so myself, we have done an incredible job with Celtic. We've even got three OGs in the team, guys. Johnston, Engels, and of course, Bernardo. That I'm actually really happy about. But one thing I'm not happy about is we haven't won a single trophy yet with Celtic, even though we've come so close on so many different occasions. But we now have the chance to change that, guys, as we are one win away from making Celtic the best team in the world. Here come Atletico on the left-hand side of the pitch. Oh, they found Julian Alvarez. we got to defend quite nicely. Oh, they found it in behind. They've just routed the boost. That might have been offside, ladies and gents, but that is a warning. Atletico Madrid aren't messing around. As here come Atletico once again on the left-hand side of the pitch. They're doing really well. Oh, look at that. What a tackle. Here comes Lutman on the ball. Okay, I see that run. Kubo is in behind. He's going to have to take this. For Why on freaking earth did you just head that? Are you totally stupid, Kubo? Bloody hell, the AI on this game is dumb as hell sometimes. Why would you not just wait for it to drop in at it with your right foot? Here we come with Engels, though. Look how big he is, by the way. Oh, my God. He could take it the entire... Oh, that pass was shocking. Alvarez is on the ball on the right side of the pitch. We need to close them down. Atletico have got a bit of room to run into. Koke's shot has been blocked. Oh, Atletico are in behind, and that's 1-0 to them on the 40th minute. They take the lead. It's been deserved. I won't lie to you. They have been all over us. I mean, we haven't even a shot yet, really, have we? We need to buck our ideas up, man. We haven't come this far to lose to a five at the back. Freaking Atletico Madrid. Here we come, though, second off. Doku is making his way down the left-hand side. I tell you what, he's done really well. Oh, my God, Doku could go all the way. And he has straight from kickoff in the second off. Jeremy Doku equals the scoreline. What a solo goal that was. Oh, my God, Jeremy Doku, take a bow, lad. That is actually insane. He literally ran through the entire freaking defense and popped it into the back of the net. Go on, son. Well, there's the equaliser, ladies and gents. Now it's time for us to control this game and get the winner. And the man of the hour is on the ball once again. He's going to try and... Jesus Christ, Atletico aren't taking any chances again with him, are they? Bernardo's on the ball. Doku on the ball once again. They'll look at him. He's going to use his pace. Oh, my God. We can make this week if we... T oh, referee. Is that a handball? It is as well. We've got a penalty. This is the chance we are looking for. Upper Makanu handballs it in. Oh, that's actually a handball. Dead and buried handball. Ladislav Kletschi to take the penalty as well. We are going to go top left bins. Please don't save it. No, he doesn't. We go 2-1 ahead in the UCL final. Oh, my God, man. What a comeback. 1-0 down to 2-1 up. Get in. The comeback is complete, ladies and gents. No more silly errors at the back, and this game is ours. But here they come. Oh, my God. They're not wasting any time. Oh, my God. That's great defending. Kubo's on the ball now. Look at the room he's got to run into. He's even got time to put it on his left. Game over. Game done and dusted. 20 minutes to go. We take a two-goal cushion lead. Considering Atletico playing five at the back, I don't know what they're playing at. I mean, look at how much room he's got to run into there. This is ultimate, by the way, EA. And there's a good chance, guys, we can get a fourth goal here if we play our cards right. We dinked it into the box. Adam nope. Lutman's there. Good save. Three minutes to go. Atletico are coming down the left-hand side. They're looking for a second goal for them, but I feel like it's too late for them, even if they do score, good save. And that's it. Full-time Atletico. Atletico were too late. We have beaten them 3-1 in the UCL final to make Celtic the world's best club. And we did it the hard way as well. No Scottish Premier League where Celtic are dominating. We put them into the Premier League where the old question is, can Celtic do it there? And lo and behold, they absolutely can. And whilst it's true we didn't win any other trophies, we won the biggest one you can win at club level with Celtic. And that is, of course, the Champions League.
And that means my job with them is done. If you have enjoyed this video with Celtic in the Premier League, please leave this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you want to watch more content from me, just click this full movie that I did with Chelsea. Last season, Ipswich Town had an incredible year of football, which led to them getting promotion. But their start in the Premier League hasn't been great, as they are winless from their first five games. And as we found out over the last two years, newly promoted sides very rarely survive the Premier League. But that's where I come in, as I'm becoming Ipswich Town's new manager to not only make sure they survive the Premier League, I'm going to win them the Champions League to crown them the world's best club. But guys, it's that time again. No transfers, no youth academy, no scouting system, I am only allowed to sign free agents. So here we are guys, it's our first free agent rebuild of FC25, and this is the Ipswich Town team we've loaded into, and I think it's very clear what our objective is in Season 1, and that is survival. I mean, Luke Wolf fending is a very big weakness at the back. Only 73 overall. The Premier League's going to tear him apart. Our goalie Murich is only 75 overall too, which is definitely a weakness. And our two CDMs in Luongo and Sam Morsi are both in their early 30s. So that's a position that we're going to have to focus on almost straight away if possible. But one thing about Ipswich Town, it's a very young side. Out of the 31 players in the squad, there's only three of them above 30 years old. And after getting Going through the team, there are a couple of players that I can attempt to try and build this team around. Jack Clark being one of them, recently transferred from Sunderland, 75 overall, 23 years old. This guy is a little bit of a beast. Omori Hutchinson is another one, showing great potential at only 20 years old. If we get him on the right development plan and keep on top of it, he could turn into a monster. And there's of course Liam Delap, only 21, showing great potential already and had a pretty impressive weekend scoring a brace. However, his overall doesn't fill me with confidence. I don't think he's going to be our starting striker just yet. Maybe after a loan move or two. The good news is though, we've got 32 million to spend on free agents. And because this is the first free agent rebuild of SC25, I'm allowed to sign as many free agents as I want and I'm allowed to sign whoever I want to as long as they are free agents. But overall, this team does have quite a bit of potential in it. We just need to set them up correctly and make sure that they're ready for a fight in the Premier because that's exactly what season one's gonna be for survival. Now, when it comes to the tactics, we are counter-attacking. There's no way we're strong enough to outright attack attack teams from the bounce. We've got to set that pressure up and then hit them on the break. We're also sticking with this 4-2-3-1 wide formation unless at some point we do buy a player that's too good not to build the team around. And as for the player tactics, our front four are going to be attack focused with our wingers being inside forwards, Chaplin being our playmaker, Delap being a poacher and when we're on the ball, this is how it's going to look going forward. We're going to be very defensive, very cautious but when we're on the break, our front four are going to be menacing. And after meddling around with the team, guys, this is our strongest setup heading into season one prior to making any free agent signings. And honestly, as it stands, we're defo going back down to the championship. But it's nothing to do with our midfield or front four. It's just our defence and goalkeeper positions. If we can find stronger defenders and keepers, we will be okay. However, guys, I've decided that Liam Delap isn't yet good enough to lead the line for Ipswich Town, so I am sending him out on loan. Alongside all of these other players. Now, majority of these players I'm sending out on loan because they'll probably get game time over the players I'm bringing in, and I do not want that to happen. But players like Twansby, Murich, Ben Johnson, and Liam Delap. I am hoping that there is a little bit of development there, especially with Liam DeLap. But right now we've got 32 million to spend and a Ipswich Town team to keep in the Premier League, so it's time to get to work. But our first free agent signing is going to be Memphis Depay, man. 82 rated, 30 years old. I'm not too certain if in real life he's got a team yet, but right now he has, and that team is Ipswich Town. And also, by the looks of things, we could turn him into a winger, we could turn him into an attacking midfielder, but right now I want him leading the line up top. And look who else has popped up out of nowhere. Adrian Rabio, 29, 83 overall. What a baller this guy is. Now, apparently, in real life, he's just signed for Marseille, but that isn't happening just yet because right now he's signing for the Tractor Boys. But unfortunately, with the signing of Adrian Rabio, I think 
we go in have to change our formation because it'll take him 72 weeks to become a CDM. Maybe we should go for the 4-3-3 attack. I mean, that will mean we'll need another centre midfielder and Morsi and Luongo will have to take a step back, but they're in the early 30s anyway. We'll probably get a season out of them at best. But luckily for me, there's a certain Eric Sanchez that I can sign. 24 years old, already 78 overall, and he fits the team perfectly, so we're signing him up on a five-year deal. And would you look at our midfield up in this team now, man. Hutchinson and Clark will have to be converted to wingers, but aside from that, we are golden at the minute. But we still need a better keeper than Murich, a better centre-back than O'Shea, and a better right-back than Johnson, and honestly, I don't like the odds of us filling all three of those positions with better players. But I could be wrong, as Carlos Asvedo is still a free agent, 28, 77 overall. We can send Murich out on him for him to get better, whilst Asvedo is balling out for us. I've also spotted Gerardo Artiega. I mean, he is a left-back, but all we've got to do is convert him to a right-back, and we are slowly but steadily improving our defence. And unfortunately, we haven't found a better centre-back than O'Shea, but we have found Israel Reyes, who I really like as an option. He's 24, he's 74 overall, and he's very quick, which could definitely bode well for us in the Prem. And with the signing of Israel Reyes, that concludes our business in Season 1. And after those six signings, I am pretty confident that we can do a job in the Premier League. It isn't going to be easy. We're not going to get a pretty finish, but hopefully we can survive the Prem with the signings that we've made. Now, we are at the end of this season, and these stats look amazing, man. Memphis Depay got 28 goal contributions, 19 for Jack Clark, and 18 for Connor Chaplin. Amari Hutchinson didn't have the best of campaigns, but he has gone up to 78 rating, which is a bloody good season for him. To be fair, looking at the team, there's been a lot of improvements. I mean, Sanchez 82 overall. I mean, Jack Clark's 81 overall now. I swear he was like 71 rated at the start of this season. I'm not being funny, guys. Judging by the stats and judging by how happy this team is, I think a top 10 finish is on the cards. And you know what? I wasn't far off. We were 14th in the league at the end of our first season in the Premier League. Seven points away from being inside the top 10. And considering the main objective this year was just to outright survive the Premier League, I'd say we've done a damn good job. We also made it to round five of the FA Cup. And we made the quarters of the Carabao Cup. Oh my God, the Tractor Boys have been on smoke in season one. But the honeymoon period is over. We sort of had an idea on who the free agents would be in season one. Going forward, we're going into the unknown. So if we do want to get the Tractor Boys into the top 10 in Season 2, this free agents list needs to come in clutch. Otherwise, we're staying put mid-table. But before we get to Season 2, if you're enjoying this free agent-only rebuild with Ipswich Town, drop this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. Now, as we enter Season 2, I want to change the tactics up a bit. I feel like we're too good now to be playing counter-attacking football. I think instead it's time for us to press. Our quality up front is good enough to pull this off. The one risk we're taking with this is we're going to have a very high line. However, Reyes, Davies and Artiega are very quick players, so this shouldn't really mess us up too much. Now, as for where I want to actually improve this team, I feel like if I can find any defenders or keepers higher rated than the ones we've got, I'm absolutely going to sign them. But ideally, I'd like a stronger cam than Chaplin. I know he had a great campaign last year, bagging like 15 goal contributions, but he's 76 overall. If we want a top 10 position, we've got to get some one better. And when we have 50 mil in our budget, it's safe to say we can sign as many free agents as we want. Unfortunately, so far, the search hasn't been very successful. Goalkeeper Benjamin Cadillac, who's 72 overall at 18 years old, is the best one I've seen. However, I've got a feeling he's Jan or Black's region, so we're going to sign him up and send him straight back out on loan. But guys, I've just found Victor Lindelof as well. I mean, he's no better than the defenders we've currently got in that position, but adding more depth to that position certainly won't hurt, will it? But guys, I've just found a centre-back who in the future could become a baller. Asam Ahmed, 74 overall, only 19 years old though. We are going to sign him and then send him straight back out on loan because right now he isn't good enough. But honestly, guys, aside from those three players, this free agents list is absolutely dead in the water. So we're just going to leave the transfer window there for season two. Which unfortunately means this team looks no different than last year heading into our second year with the Tractor Boys. But the one thing that we have changed this season is the way we play. We're pressing this year instead of just being on the counter-attack all the time. And hopefully that is the difference maker. And as we arrive at the end of this season, I'm not sure if he has. I mean, Clark, Depay and Hutchinson have had great campaigns, 10 
9 and 1 for Hutchinson, 19 and 10 for Depay, and 23 and 9 for Jack Clark. But Sammy Smodix has had a terrible campaign, 5 goal contributions in 27 games. We need a better attacking midfielder, and we need one as soon as possible. But there is more good news, guys, as Liam Delap is returning from his loan move next June. He's 78 rated. But Depay is still only 32 years old and 83 overall. Maybe we keep Depay for one more year in the starting team, keep Liam Delap on loan for one more year, and then we make that move. But it's got to be said, guys, there's been some improvement in this team. Look at freaking Asvedo, for goodness sake. 83 overall, that's insane. But look at this, we are top 10 in the Premier League. We just missed out on European football as well by two bloody points. Oh my god, the Tractor Boys are on the up. But that just proves that tactics play a huge part in how you play in man. Last year we played defensively and it didn't work. This year we pressed and attacked and it's paid off. I mean, look at this. We once again reached round five of the FA Cup. And we've reached round four of the Carabao Cup this time. All around, guys, we are doing really well. But we are still in an awkward position. Our right back needs improving. Our cam roll needs improving. Other than that, next year, if we can sort those positions out, we are looking at European football. Now, guys, we're in season three with the Tractor Boys right now. And I've got a situation. I've looked through all of the attacking midfielders in the free agents list. It's not really any better than the ones we currently got. So I'm changing the formation to a 4-3-3 flat in the hopes that we can find a CDM or centre mid. Honestly, the cam roll is out of the question at the minute. And just look who I found, Louis Chavez. I mean, he is 30, we'll get a maximum of two good years out of him at best, but he'll definitely be a welcome addition to the team. And we're finally getting somewhere with our defence, Josip Stanisic, 26, 80 overall. He's far better than Artiega, and he's definitely going to improve our defence. And guys, I found a great long-term solution for a fullback, Sebastian Rio. I don't know if I got that name right, but he's 17. 73 overall, we're going to get this guy into the team and send him straight back out on loan to get him game time and improving. Now guys, I've just realised something. We've got a slight problem going forward. Adrian Rabio and Memphis Depay both 32 and 31 overall and two of our best players. And unless we can find centre mid or striker free agents that can replace them at some point in the next couple of years, we are absolutely screwed in those positions. To be fair for the striker role, it's not that bad actually. Liam Delap can eventually take his place providing he keeps growing out on loan like he has been but Rabio's only got one or two good years left in him Louis Chavez two or three at best Sanchez is okay but we do need a couple of centre midfielders and I'll level with you lot this isn't looking good for us at the minute man we need a miracle in the next couple of years otherwise we are in a bit of trouble but for now guys we've done all we can to improve the team we brought in a new right back in Stanisic we brought in a better centre mid in Chavez so hopefully this will be enough to get us European football. And guys, I'm loving the looks of these stats, man. 28 and 8 for Jack Clark, 24 and 12 for a 33 year old Memphis Depay, 17 and 7 for Hutchinson, and 8 and 14 for Rabio. Bloody hell, he had a good year, didn't he? And look at this Jack Clark has actually been announced as the Premier League Player of the Year. Oh my god, if that isn't a good sign, I don't know what is. And look at the state of this team, ladies and gents. Surely to God, now we've got European football in some form at either the Conference League, Europa, or hopefully the Champions League. We've got Champions League football. We are fourth in the Premier League. We have got the Tractor Boys European football for season four. Oh, that's amazing, man. I can't believe it. All we needed to do is play the Gagan Press from the beginning, and we'd have probably got here quicker. We even made the quarters of the FA Cup this time. Granted, Leeds did actually annihilate us, but the fact of the matter is we made the quarters. And we made the quarters of the Carabao Cup. Oh, my Lord, the Tractor Boys. Fair enough. I am so beyond happy with this team, man. But as happy as I am, there are slight concerns for the next couple of years. Rabio is now 32, so at best, we'll get one more good year out of him. And Luis Chavez is not good enough to play in the Champions League. We do have the same situation with Depay, but luckily for us, Liam Delap is 82 overall now since he's been on loan to Barcelona, so we can just bring him back and slot him straight into the team. We could also do with replacing Reeves with a stronger centre-back. Very unlikely that we're going to be able to do this with free agents, but we do need to do this. But if we can somehow find a way to replace Rabio, Luis Chavez and Jacob Reeves with somebody better in the next couple of years, we can legitimately take Ipswich Town to that next level. Now, 
Now guys, we've just arrived into season four with the Tractor Boys. And as I've just said, the certain positions on this team we need to improve. But there's one position I may have just improved without even realizing it. Because who remembers Isam Ahmed? He's currently on loan to Spurs 21, 78 overall. We bring him back off loan, send Grooves out on loan to make sure he gets game time. And honestly, we just hope for the best from there. But there is still the Chavez and Rabio situation that we need to sort out. We need to pray to God that in this season, that free agent system when it comes to midfielders is cracked because otherwise we may be in a little bit of trouble. And guys, at long bloody last, I found a midfielder, Edson Cabral, 8 year old at 21 years old. Insane stats to go with it. I'm pretty certain this is Casemiro's regen and he now plays for us. But it's bad news from there because I'm looking at centre mids. I'm even looking for regen centre mids and I cannot find a single one that goes into the team. And that's the only position now that we need to buy for. I mean, now that we've changed to the 4-3-3 holding, the midfield is for now sorted for at least one more year until we have to deal with the Rabio situation. Until then, guys, we are sound. I mean, looking at the bench as well, it doesn't really need messing with either. We are covered on all bases with Ipswich. And it's a good thing too, guys, because we're finally in the UCL with Ipswich. But I'm getting through the table, guys, and there's not as many big teams in this competition as I thought they'd be. We might actually do pretty well in it in our first stint in this competition. Just like we're doing well in the Premier League so far, after three games, we're still undefeated top four. But I've now done all I can for this season, guys. Cabral is slotted into the team so is Ahmad and so is Dilap hopefully those three have a cracking campaign and improve like mad because if that happens and Rabiot can just hold on for another campaign we might just become the best team in the Premier League but guys, that just didn't happen. We barely scraped top four. We just beat Arsenal 2 by one point. But have you seen how many goals we scored, man? 86. That's seven more than Man City, for God's sake. If we could learn how to not concede as many, we'd be all right. I think that's the case with the Gagan press. You're much more likely to score goals because it's an attacking tactic. However, defensively, it's not that good. But look at this. We made the FA Cup final before Brighton beat us 3-1. Come on man we should be beating Brighton but we only made it to round four this time of the Carabao Cup Arsenal do knock us out but then again we beat them to the top four so I'll take that but unfortunately in the UCL we don't make it through automatically we are in the playoffs we missed off by two points man are you joking who else is with us man City Atletico Barca Liverpool oh my god God, all the big teams are in the playoffs. What's going on? AC Milan finished top of this group. Are you taking the mick of all teams? How cracked is AC Milan's team in career mode? And unfortunately, we get battered in the playoffs by Real Madrid. 8-4 on aggregate. Jesus, we got taught a lesson in football. I don't know about pressing in the Champions League, guys. Clearly, it didn't work. Maybe we go for something like kick and rush. Maybe we go for Tiki Taka. Wing play is an option because Hutchinson and Clark are amazing. I mean, the Stats speak for themselves, guys. Jack Clark with 40 goal contributions, 41 for Liam Delap, 18 for Hutchinson, 21 for Eric Sanchez, too. But one thing that's really caught me off guard is Rabiot's actually gone up to 88 overall despite him being 33 years old. Maybe he's got one more good year left in him. Issam Ahmed's also done a good job, 83 rated this year. He's definitely earned his place in that starting 11. And so is Edson Cabral, 85 overall. Jesus Christ, what a play. It does make you wonder where we can improve this team now because there's no way I'm finding free agents as good as anybody in our starting 11. At best, we're going to find bench players next season. But we've got to come up with something, guys, because if we want to win the Champions League like PSG have this year, we've somehow got to take Ipswich Town up to that next level. Well, as we enter season 5 with the Tractor Boys, we're off to a great start. Patrick Haas, I'm pretty certain this is Granite Shaka's reject, but he's only 20, already 79 overall his market value isn't that good, but he'll definitely make a great backup option for Cabral. Now, guys, let me take you back a couple of years. Who remembers Ryan Kent from Rangers? He's a free agent now. He's 31, 76 overall, but not long ago, this guy was making you break controls on Ultimate Team. But right now, he's going to help Ip switch town, break down defences, as he's now a tractor boy. And finally, a little bit more depth for that centre mid role, Danny Ceballos, 31, 79 overall. On top of having Champions League experience, 
he's got Premier League experience too because he used to play for Arsenal. And with the signing of Danny Ceballos, that officially wraps up our transfer window. Because as I said at the end of season four, we are not going to find free agents that are going to fit into the starting team. And we've already filled up the bench as much as we need to. I mean, look at it, guys. We've got depth in every single position and quality depth at that. We're set for season five. And I'm glad about that, guys, because we're once again in the UCL. I swear we hadn't better be rock bottom by the time this group stage is over. Because let's be real, guys, this team has certainly got a chance of winning it. I mean, that front three alone are scum. But I do have one concern, guys, and that is Adrian Rabio. He is starting to go down in overall. But in my opinion, as long as he doesn't go down further than 85 or at the very very worst 84 we should be okay but it's safe to say we were nowhere near winning the Premier League this year Man City ran away with it the good news is though the wing play tactics meant we actually conceded less goals but in turn actually scored less goals as well as for the FA Cup though we made it to the quarters before Chelsea knocked us out well we dropped a stinker in the Carabao Cup losing to Forest in round three Honestly, I'm not liking how this season's going right now. But this is fantastic. We are sixth in the UCL League stage. Sevilla finished top fair play to them, but this means we're automatically through to the knockouts. Where we just about beat Sporting on pens. Oh my days, that's not a good sign, is it? But we smashed Liverpool in the quarters, which means we could be playing Leverkusen, Bayern, or Dortmund in the semis. Give me Dortmund, man. For goodness sake, don't give me Leverkusen. We got Dortmund. We beat them 3-2 on aggregate and we're playing Leverkusen in the final. Oh, my old friend's coming back to haunt me. I mean, look at the state of that team. Endrick's their striker. Florian Wirtz is still there. Granit Jack is there still. I thought I'd signed his reject. But I don't think we should be too worried because we've got Liam Delap, we've got Jack Clark, Adrian Rabio, and also an aging Memphis Depay. Hutchinson's really shot me, despite him being almost 90 rated, he hasn't even got 20 goal contributions. But this is the team we're going into the final with, and I'm happy to say that for the most part, we've managed to keep a couple of OGs. I mean, Omari Hutchinson's one of them, Liam Delap, Jack Clark, and of course, Leif Davies. There's also Murich on the bench, Jacob Greaves, Chaplin. I'm actually really happy with that. We've brought quite a few people from season one to the final. Whether we win it though is a different story. So far, we've won nothing with the tractor boys but we could change that right now as all we've got to do is beat Bayer Leverkusen to win the biggest trophy you can win at club level the Champions League here come Bayer Leverkusen early in the nope. first off good save as Fado because on the ball he's found Rabio. Rabio, we could find him Ori Hutchinson Hutchinson he's in behind the defense can he get a goal good save we've still got the ball though in a very dangerous position good defending no way good save bloody hell fire we got away with that one but here comes Hendrik He's in behind. Oh my god, ask Vado. What a keeper. But we do have Liam Delap on the ball now. Okay, Liam Delap. He's strong. He's got the pace. And he sees that run from Rabio. Yeah. Rabio! Oh my days, great defending. Leaf Davies to take the corner. Our first of the game. This could be a good ball in. If it reaches anybody, Amari Hutchinson has got it on the outside. He's got a bit of room. He's shot. What a save. This is a battle of the keepers. I'm telling you, what a performance from both of them. Here comes Leverkusen on the left hand side of the pitch. Oh, that's a gorgeous ball. In. Oh, he's taking a defense out. Nope. Oh, that's a great save again. Bro, what is it going to take for either one of these teams to score, man? Everything has been thrown at it, but they just can't score. But we do have a good opportunity here as Omari Hutchinson is on the ball. Ref, he's just been taken out. Second half now, and this is such an evenly contested game. But we do have Omari Hutchinson on the right hand side. He's a bit knackered, but he does have the pace. Okay, fast all week for coming. Clutch, another save. What do we have to do to score? But nope. Hendricks on the ball. As Fado with the save on the other end of the pitch. Jack Clark. Okay, he sees that run. Delap is in behind. Okay, Delap. He's away from Araujo. Referee, that's got to be a red card. And it is. Araujo, you dirty little shitbag. This is the opening that we need, ladies and gents. I tell you what, let's have a bang with Leaf Davies. Oh, referee penalty. Is that a penalty or is that a free kick? Oh, it's a freaking free kick. Okay, we can take advantage of this. Leaf Davies, I think I've got the hang of free kicks in FC25. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, okay. Leif Davies on the rebound. My God, what do we have to do to score? That was literally a freaking open net, man. That defending is insane. But we do have Jack Clark. Okay. Liam Delap is there. Oh my God. Thank God for that. It's done. I swear to God, if we lose from this position, I quit this game. 1-0 to the Tractor Boys. Into literally everything we got. A man sent off. A rebound 
finally answers our question of what we've got to do to score because that is it. Now it's just a case of making no stupid mistakes, no defensive errors. We have to be perfect for the remaining 15 minutes of this game. Oh, but Hendrik's in behind. Oh, my days. Asfedo, best keeper in the game. 100% best keeper in the game. Two minutes added time. Leverkusen have the chance for one more attack. That is stumped, though. Look at that for defending from Reyes. And that's the full-time whistle. We hung on in the end for a 1-0 win to make the Tractor Boys the best team in the world. Oh, my God. That was not an easy final at all. It was truly the battle of the keepers. If Ronald Araujo didn't make that tackle and get himself sent off, I genuinely saw this going to a penalty shootout. But here we are, guys. Carlos Asfedo lifts the Champions League. We have completed our mission with Tractor Boys, Ipswich Town, winning them the Champions League with free agents only. And with that draws an end to this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave us a like. Smash that subscribe button if you are new around here. And if you want to watch more content from me, just click this video right here.